Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me all right. Please tell me that if you don't, uh, we are streaming live on Facebook and on Twitch. Um, hello, Pot. Hello, Geek Raider. Hello, DJ Fool, Teranate, Nervous NPC, Nuts11. Perfect. Great. I can see you all. Great. Aiden, everyone. Hi, all. So we are streaming today with Core Design. We're going to be playing. Tomb Raider Remastered Collection. Uh, special thanks to Seth McKenzie, who will be actually playing the game because, you know, I'll be moderating the stream. We will have a couple of people from Core Design obviously playing and reacting to it. And if you have any questions, obviously throw them in into the chat and I'll bring them up uh, or any comments to the team or whatever. I know that quite a few people who actually made the remasters are actually in the chat as well. So make sure you say thanks to them as well as Core Design. Anyway, without further ado, Let's do, and also, by the way, I'm so fucking happy to be back on stream. I haven't streamed in over a year, and this is my new room. Um, things will go wrong because they always do, and also I haven't streamed for a year. So do apologize if they do. Anyway, right, let's go. Let's bring uh, Gavin Romery, first of all, and there's Tom Scott. Hello, you Hello, both. Tom. Oh, and Hello. there's Seth as well. Uh, Tom, Gavin, do you want to introduce yourself and tell us what were you doing during your times at Core Design? Not necessarily just with Tomb Raider, but in general as well. Sure. Um, I'll go first, Tom, if that's all right. Uh, of course. Yeah, so I'm Gavin Rummery. Um, I worked on the original Tomb Raider and Tomb Raider 2 um, as one of the programmers. Um, that's it, really. It was a very big team, so I had quite a lot to do with uh, making the game. And one of the big things I did was make the uh, level editor, which uh, sort of lives on in some ways even to this day which is kind of interesting because certainly when i was making it i wasn't expecting that to happen so there we go uh and i am tom scutt and i worked on tomb raider three four and five uh i was the ai programmer at the time but i've sort of since then moved into design rather than uh programming but that's my that was my contribution to tomb raider built all on Gavin's hard work, in fact, which I'm very grateful for. <laughs> we will have uh, Andy Sandham as well, will join us at some point, um, and he will, I'll make him introduce himself later. Uh, yeah, so, and we have Seth, who does videos on YouTube. Seth, do you want to just introduce yourself so I don't make stuff up about you, because you will then sue YouTuber. me. Uh, nah, it's all good, yeah. <laughs> I'm a little YouTuber. Thanks for the opportunity, by the way. Cool. Okay. Uh, well, without further ado, uh, we're just going to play the game um, now. Uh, and there we go. We're starting with the case. Uh, right. So have you guys played this at all, Gavin, Tom? I did. I actually played through the whole of the first one because it's the first time I'd actually ever played it as like a player. I suddenly thought, it's been long enough. I wonder if I could play it. And it was actually quite an experience actually playing it for the very first time as a player. I Actually, 28 years was turns out to be just enough time for my brain to have forgotten enough that I had surprises. I was crushed by boulders. I was attacked by monsters I didn't even know had been placed in certain parts of the level. The second half of the game, I just honestly didn't know that well i don't think because um it was so that was done some of that was developed late in development when we were all working really hard so um when i was getting to those kind of later levels that was there was a lot of surprises there because i only recognized the bits that i personally added things to you know so for example i knew this exploding statues were going to be the i think it's a tomb of token or whatever and um but the rest of the level was like I didn't recognize it at all. So it was, it was quite a remarkable. I had to even uh, use Stella's walkthrough a couple of times because I had no idea what to do in certain bits, which was quite really. I think we all have to so, do that yeah. at some point, so I know another. <laughs> what about you, Tom? Uh, I'm afraid I haven't played the remasters yet. I would like to, but I'm I'm uh, too much of a miser to spend money on a, on a game that I already own in some form. Uh, I will. I will get you however, again after this. Don't worry. I don't. It's fine. It's fine. I mean, it's. I'm. I'm really interested. I mean, I'm interested watching this partly because I was a. You know, Tomb Raider one and two. I was a consumer. I was a player rather than someone involved in it. So I have very fond memories of both of them as a player. I mean, I just. I still remember 
I played the Tomb Raider demo, which I think was on a cover, uh, a magazine cover or something like that. I played it for hours and I was just, it was just revolutionary. I mean, it really was extraordinary to have an actual human character running around a 3D environment at the time. So, I mean, I've got, yeah, I've got very fond memories of the game. At now, as a designer, rather than a, an, a rather than an engineer i'm kind of interested to to see what they've done with the controls because i i wonder how modern players would find retro controls on a game that looks like it's a modern more modern game so it'd be interesting to see how that mix and match works of modern controls i uh, couldn't do it i couldn't uh, uh, I, said, I was before, on... said before you go uh people are uh, saying that this screen is very dark it's actually like ridiculously dark as well right now uh could you just do what you were doing before um make it make it a little bit yeah, yeah, no like... if you go back to the like it's, it is okay when you go in classic mode but when you switch back to the remastered version it's like ridiculously dark um so yeah the just graphics are so dark um, but I can uh, okay. Okay. Like well, if you a little bit, yes. Uh, okay, we, yeah. In terms of uh, yeah, in terms of tank controls and by tank controls we mean the original controls, by the way, because she's like turning like that. Mm. Uh, you can switch between that and modern controls. I could not get the modern controls in, uh, into it, but Seth apparently mastered them somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I I would like to say I was playing on um, a switch. Uh, yeah. Switch light, in fact, and oh, well. I had to actually use the um, D pad. The the I couldn't. I I tried using the modern controls, but my my brain was programmed to use modern controls, and it just I couldn't. Suddenly, all the fiddly bits yeah. you need to do, with Laura, I couldn't do it. So I just went. I mean, and the moment I went back to using D pad, which it was like a little bit of muscle memory, I suddenly appeared and sort of reappeared, and I was like, oh yeah. But I was running around like I used to watch other people do when they were first yeah. playing it and running into walls and things like that. I just thought, God, it's really, <laughs> it was really funny actually. I was just thinking, oh, I've turned into one of the kind of idiots I used to watch playing when I was going, oh, come on, the controls are straightforward. Do you do it like this? Because I'd be playing it, you know, six months continuously by that point, you know, an expert. But I'd love, I mean, I'd love to know what people who have got used to the new controls feel about it because it feels like it would be a completely different game, really, um, to, to be playing with kind of like mod. Um, do you know, there's a lot of pros and cons with both of them. Uh, I think there's a tiny bit more control you do have with tank controls. There's still a bit more work to do with these, but they actually are quite viable. Hmm. Using them now just to demonstrate. I, I just could not. I, I could not get them to like to work. I, I tried them on gamepad, but the thing is it just feels wrong to play classic Tomb Raider on a gamepad because I grew up playing it on PC and PC, on a keyboard it's much more precision based, you know, because it's a grid based game. It's kind of more you hold shift, you go there, you know, you it's more easier. So for me to play it in a in, on a controller it just feels like I'm like an um, infidel or something. It's just like blasphemy <laughs> playing this game on the PC with a controller. No. Yeah, absolutely no. Uh, actually, there's a qu question for Gavin I missed. Um, uh, aren't you forgetting something? Weren't you also created director and lead developer for the uh, Tomb Raider Anniversary Edition as well? Uh, yes. So, well, God, that's a whole nother story. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was my attempt when I became studio manager um, in the sort of dying days of um, core design. I had this uh, idea because it was about 10 years. Well, it obviously was going to be 10 years that, um, after the original game to yeah. try and do this, essentially, try and make a remaster of the original game because I'd seen the Capcom game. Um, they've done Resident Evil, haven't they? I think on GameCube, I'm not quite sure, but I thought, oh, yeah, that'd yeah. be a cool Resident idea. It wasn't a very one. common thing to do back then, and I thought, oh, it'd be really cool. And I sort of, um, Rich Morton and um, Phil Chapman came to me because they've been working on um, free running, and they were like, we could make a Tomb Raider game with this on the PSP because everyone was expecting the PSP, uh, PlayStation Portable to be super, you know, to absolutely smash it. And, um, yeah. You know, the DS was just this weird thing. We never expected that to take off. I think it was the other way around. The DS took off and the um, PSP didn't. But anyway, the, so it seemed perfect for that, for the PSP, because the PSP was very similar controls. And it was kind of like a PlayStation 1.5 in PAL, wasn't it, I think, Tom? 
Um, you could emulate you could emulate PS1 games on it. Yeah. So it, it, yeah, and there was things like yeah. Ridge Racer and stuff coming out of it. So it seemed like a good thing. So I kind of tried to you know sell the idea to IDOS, and they were kind of like, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. And it's a crime. Then we kind of got further down the line, and we <laughs> it looked like it was going to happen, and then yeah, suddenly there was a bit of politics behind the scenes about should core design be doing yeah. it now that it was yeah. over at crystal and crystal put together a demo and went we could do it and that was the end of that really which was a bit it was, it was a like very such a shame because that game like when we when we managed to get the playable built and the fans managed to like patch it up and make it playable because i, I only received raw files just to see the environments, how they were crafted for the, and then you go back like thinking this is just a PSP game in mm. 2006, mm. the amount of, and a lot of the lights were as well were like already programmed into the engine itself rather than, you know, dynamically made, but they just look like they were made dynamically. if I'm making any sense, yeah, just this cozy environments. Nice. Yeah. I think the light is yeah. something core design has always done right. <laughs> No, it was it was coming along nicely. I mean, I think Tom and I probably both twitch a little bit of the memory of it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we uh, when we rolled a lot of the stuff we'd learned from doing free running into into it as well mm. um, to do a kind of control and marking up the environment and things. So, but it, yeah, it was really nice. It was yeah, it, it's a shame it never happened. And I, I agree with Gab. I kind of still feel slightly sore about it. Mm. Uh, I got a question here. Um, have you, any of you were involved, uh, it's from Unimatrix, uh, also known as Beyond with a Sexy Beard. Uh, have you been involved in remasters in any capacity at all? Uh, I haven't. They contacted me right at the beginning, um, about a year and a half ago, whatever, about when they were trying to track down the source code. I've got to admit, I was a little unhelpful because I was like, uh, who are these people? What are they doing? Why are they asking me on social media if they could have the source code? Or I was like, well, no, I'm not sure about this. So I was a bit sort of, um, I, I just didn't know what it was. I just thought, and, and to be honest, it made my sort of um, Tomb Raider anniversary scars start to twitch as well. And I was like, oh, no, I don't know what this is about. So I kind of wasn't, I, and then they went away and it didn't happen. So from my point of view, and then suddenly it pops up later that year. Um, so but then when i discovered the fans had done it i thought that was absolutely brilliant honestly i thought you know knowing that people uh who've been active in the community had been the ones behind it i thought that's absolutely brilliant that's perfect in many ways though i'm sure they would have done you actually job, met quite a few of them at derby you just didn't know that they were making it they're not allowed to i probably didn't the know there's probably all sorts of people yeah exactly i'm you know so um but yeah yeah, yeah it was um so i didn't really i kind of contacted aspira afterwards and said great job guys sorry for not being more helpful at the time but i was worried about the legalities and all sorts of things i'm not supposed to have the code i'm sure i shouldn't you know and all this but yeah. what about you tom <clears throat> I, no i didn't know anything about it until until it was announced um so no 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 one contacted me they probably they probably took one look at my code if i'm slightly worried about it. i feel sorry for the per, poor person that had to go through my my very poor c coding and try and uh I was thinking about all the comments that are in there. Exactly. Like, yeah. Rude. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Seen all this uh, stuff. Now. Okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's absolutely. The so. that had the worst one. Like there was one comment I remember. I know who actually left it as well. I'm sure you will guess. Please. Fuck my anal passage. Um, was a comment <laughs> in uh, Ray Chronicles. Um, yeah. Uh, I could probably so, make a good guess, but. Um, mm. Yeah, yeah, I think we both, we all know it. <laughs> Seth, could you showcase us Lara's model? Because the question here from the world of Tomb Raider, what do you think about Lara's remastered model, which we we'll probably need to get her into the light a little bit, because she's a bit dark in here. Um, like, what do you think how they remade her? Um... I'll get a close oh, up soon. very dark. When it's bright. Yeah. Yeah, okay, well, we'll get back to uh, it. I think, I think it looks excellent. I think everything that they've done is... Um... You know, just Conrad for my, I think in uh, terms of making yeah. a remaster of you know the game I think it kind of looks how you remember it until you press yeah. the button and discover it 
didn't look like that back in the day, which I always find with remasters, you know, you always go, Do they really improve this? And you find it, look at the old pictures, <laughs> go, oh, yeah, it wasn't quite how I remember, you know. Used to be even on 8 bit games, I remember that going back to them and just go, oh my God, I, how did I Seth, show this? us the facial expressions, facial expressions, show us those in the photo mode. Uh, yeah, the, the, the model was made by a guy called Conrad. He's a Polish Tomb Raider fan. Uh, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, people recognized that it was his work as soon as the first screenshots were released. They're like, oh, definitely it's him doing it because the renders were recognizable. What's your thoughts on this, Tom, on the, on the, on the model? Yeah, it's really nice. I don't think I knew about the, about the emote stuff. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's very, it's very impressive. I mean, again, it just makes me you know it just makes you go back to trying to because I, I think i'm right in saying that most of the memory in tomb raider was taken up with with laura's animation so that was probably the single biggest uh hit was, on the memory it, i think yeah i mean it's just, terrifying how small everything oh had. yeah yeah you know the i can't even remember what that was it two megabytes or something stupid or yeah it was two what? megabytes yeah so i think it was two megabytes. i mean it's funny even it's, it's screenshots yeah. so this would be bigger than yeah oh yeah the entire right. playstation memory and that's right um it's kind of funny actually because the memory was so tight that you see people mm. going why did they oh they should combine these levels they shouldn't have you know blah 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 it's like yeah they were combined we actually yeah. had to split them up in many cases to make them yeah. fit on the playstation so where you look at a level and go why didn't they just keep those why did they not not have two i think two tokens one of them is like why is it not on the end of the system why do they just make that separate because <laughs> we ran out of memory so we had to go oh well, this is a convenient point <laughs> uh, break it in half it um, palace midas would have been the most epic level in the world because i think that's three levels in a row all the egypt levels were one level when neil handed that over the first time <laughs> here's a nice message for you yes. both uh from tafne uh she wants to say thanks uh uh, she absolutely adores and always will be infinitely grateful for each and every one for creating this franchise and the beautiful Lara Croft. Uh, oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank very you. Much. What can I say? It's, thank you very much. Uh, it's actually, looking at the quality of this, it's interesting what you were saying earlier on, Ash, about you got used to playing it on PC, because as I said, I was a player on, on, on uh, Tomb Raider 1 and 2, and I played it on PC, but then I had to get used to playing it on on console when I went to work at core because it was like the PlayStation was always was always the kind of main platform the first platform that's you know that's what it had to work that's what it had to be work 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 on because that was like the lowest common denominator so I got used yeah. to the PlayStation so I'd, I'd got used to looking at it on on a PC and with like probably many other people I bought a 3DS 3D no 3DFX card it was graphics mm. card yeah purely for yes. Tomb Raider yeah, um, uh, and uh, it, it oh, looked and amazing. Later, yeah. yeah, that's right. And it looked absolutely astonishing. It changed it. So then you had to get, you know, then I had to get used to going back to PlayStation graphics when I actually started working on it. Yeah, it was a big thing in the when we were making Tomb Raider 1 because, again, terrifyingly, we had low res mode, which I can't even believe it was playable, but it mm. was 320 by 200 resolution. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, but but you then you had ten inch screens as well for your PC. Remember, you had like tiny yeah. screens. The, so everything. There were also of... CRT as well, so it it looked fine. Exactly. So it because blurred, it, low think. resolution. I mean, yeah. Um, uh, and this question that's popped up. Um, I wasn't on two. Well, did I? I can't remember actually. No, I don't think I did. We. It was kind of a joint effort at this super packing and Tomb Raider two. We had to pack them even harder to get them to fit in. Mm. So yeah, we were just doing things like if you know you've got an X Y Z rotation, so we were just going, oh, it's only rotating in X, so we can pack that down to just the X rotation and the other two are zero and things like that. I think that was what we did, but I can't remember that one. So uh, yeah. there is a question for you: um, Were you responsible for super packing the frames, or was it joined effort? This is from Troy, by the way. I was just He's answering Ash if you didn't understand what oh, I was so, just saying. Sorry, so, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I did not take my DHD pills today. I'm very sorry. Yeah. But this oh, is from no Troy. Uh, Troy actually is one of the developers of this. I think he did programming. He will correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, there, in the um, FMV uh, cutscenes for the after the end of the first level in Tomb Raider 2, where she's on the laptop, you can see a little Easter egg where his name is mentioned on the, on the Easter egg. Yes, I'm correct. He did programming. Oh, awesome. Uh, well done. 
Uh, there is a question about the levels. Uh, was it like, do you mean like all the three levels, a second from insanity, uh, asking this? If, uh, if you look what... at the ones which have the same colored textures, that'll give you a hint, because again, this is also an insane thing. So before the Voodoo graphics card, the whole thing was rendered with 256 colors, because that's what um, the DOS computers could do at the time. So that's why a lot of the palettes are extremely sort of monotone in the game because it was literally rendering the whole game in 256 colors um so it's i can't remember exactly if you look if you've got a pc version of the original game and you look on the disc in the directory wherever it puts the um levels you'll see levels 7a 7b 7c and things like that those levels that are called 7a b c because there was meant to be 10 yeah. levels i think in the, when we started yeah. it um and we ended up level nine never got built although level nine i think is the mines because that was separate and then there's the atlantis ones but for some reason they got i don't know what happened with level nine it ended up being level 10a 10b 10c right? so i remember doing this off the top of my memory um but yeah all the other ones that have this abc thing going on were one level so that if you have a look sense. on the disc you'll be able to yeah. check out which ones were one level and it's often the ones where it kind of it appears like oh look they've done it so they've got a bit of the previous level at the beginning of it it's like yeah it's because we literally were going where can we chop the game okay here do it <laughs> make it to to get it to fit on the playstation because we were just cramming it in <laughs> uh there is the question about lara's mansion which is a good idea actually um how did you come up with ideas for Lara's home? Was there anything really wanted to add but couldn't? I know Heather did the, did the levels, but do you have any recollections on the? Uh, well, obviously, I was on the first two. The first one, obviously, was just uh, the internals training level. So the second one was the one where it kind of went a bit wild, and Heather went a bit wild, honestly, building the outside. And I think she was decorating it as her ideal home by the end and sort of that's why you got the walk-in <laughs> freezer that uh winston oh. gets locked into just because she fancied one of them wow oh, wouldn't it be great to have your own larder and all this um so yeah she went around building that and i, I added the maze in the garden actually because i wanted to <laughs> test the ai so i created a maze <laughs> <laughs> i don't think i knew that yeah that was my uh my addition to nice. lara's house <laughs> Did, uh, they did so, add yeah, a little I... bit of the outside bit in the first manner in here. Like if you look at the, out of her windows, you can see a little bit of the Tomato 2 area. Because I know in the first yes, I... game, you, you could not go yes. outside, but they added it in the like, background. Yes, yes. Big, uh, uh, a... Sorry, Tom, I interrupted you. Were you saying something? No, no, no. Oh, no, I no. I okay. think so. Uh, was it you, Gavin? Or did I interrupt you? I, I interrupted someone. I no, no, no. You're all cool. Oh. Sorry. Okay. I think all all I said was I didn't I didn't know that I didn't know that Gavin put the maze in um, Tomb Two for to test the AI. So that yeah. was a... it, was, it was also a special maze, Tom, because you know the whole thing you can get around a maze by sort of touching the left wall or something. Yeah. Follow it. Have... I purposely made it so you couldn't do it. Yeah, I've disconnected. <laughs> disconnected. Just got it. And then I put a tunnel in so you had to get into the middle by. Nice. <laughs> Look at, look at the light, uh, nice. look at the skies they've done in here. It just looks very nice. There is a yeah, um, nice message from Malexa X. Thank you so much for amazing devs. We're working on the game's original and the remasters. I still love to play them. And my three year old boy loves to see the game. He just stopped to look at the screen just now. Very nice. No, that's very really nice. nice. Oh, yeah, I can certainly say when we were making them, we did not expect to be talking about them 30 odd years later or whatever it's. <laughs> Oh, there's another the terrifying one. Is that... uh, Sorry, go on. Uh, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. No, 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 uh, go okay. on, Ash. Sorry. Okay. Lady Rara, I always like to pronounce her name, it's funny. Uh, Tomb Raider has always been my escape and such a huge part of my life. Do not know where I'd been without it. Thank you so much for your hours and hours of amazing work. And another, uh, I will go with another one after you say what you said, what you were saying, Tom. Go on. No, all I was going to say was because because of someone mentioned playing with their their, their kid there. The terrifying thing is now that the, a, a couple of the designers in in my design team go when when we kind of when they first joined said, "Oh yeah, I remember. I used to watch my dad play Tomb Raider when I was a kid." And it's like you know, sort of like it's it's like a yeah, a lot of pe some of the designers. I'm not really sure they were even born when Tomb Raider came out, which is terrifying. <laughs> mm. uh, there is a 
question about the Lost Valley. Um, was the Lost Valley supposed to be a big cave or was just sky supposed to be there? Uh, yeah, it's a good question, actually. Um, I can't actually remember. I mean, my head everywhere is underground, um, I think, but I don't really know what was in the minds of um, the peeps doing it. I sort of like the Colosseum, I think, was definitely meant to be underground in my head. Um, but you really need, you know, Heather to give her opinion on what whether I, it kind of feels like. I think that one I felt that it was it was night time, but I think it was open to interpretation, really. Um, so yeah, it is interesting seeing all the sky boxes in the new one and how they've interpreted it. Um, it does add a lot. It's got to be said. It does I, for me at least. I think. Atmospheric. Um, I think it's also interesting the draw distance actually, because the old version, obviously, another one of the many things we were having to fight with was um how much we could draw in distance so when it fades to black it's because literally it's not drawing anything beyond yeah. that point um i remember playing carmageddon so... where the distance was so short that sometimes you just even on pc you would drive and then randomly the car appears speeding right out of, you, <laughs> out of nowhere <laughs> uh, precisely there's actually, yeah there's actually a good comment from uh lion cyborg about anniversary edition because the um lost valley in there is actually set outside and there is a distant volcano visible um in, in the lost valley i do remember that maybe that's where they got the uh, inspiration from because uh, because obviously the guys who worked on this did help to make that anniversary edition playable and stuff like that so they probably draw quite a few um, inspiration from it. There is a question from Terenity for Gavin. You said you finished Mid-1 Remastered. What do you think about Remastered Artistic Direction, since we are going there anyway, uh, since the new light system has been implemented as well? I I, I thought it was generally, it's, I thought it was great. Um, I, I, the only thing I thought, and I don't know, I know there's been a patch that's tried to address some of this, is sometimes the lighting was used to kind of point you in the right direction. We did tend to Mm. Um, sometimes do that and same with texture and I found a couple of points in the game um, where I actually found that I had to flick to the old graphics to go oh yeah it's over there because they light, lit it more realistically and it was more atmospheric but it was like and I think the system there was the tiny little keys that were so small you couldn't even see yeah. them whereas the old version they're whick, whacking great things you know that could <laughs> spot from a mile off so yeah you've got to when you're actually designing games, you do actually sit there going, "Oh yeah, it's a, in fact it's a classic one." It, you, your players get lost, and you go, "Let's put a great big bright light over there that'll catch their eye." Oh, it, it's definitely so, yeah. a, a standard level design thing to show the show the exit with a illuminate the exit, um, or as you say, there's a note for you on that from Raina who actually <laughs> oh, okay. <this>. Yeah. <laughs> we fixed the I thought I'd already played it. And uh, uh, yeah, you, it you, made, you it made me laugh. Darby, it's, it's... by the way, uh, you will remember home this year if you're going. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, all these people will be able to introduce themselves. Cool. Yeah. Uh, um, this, you, you see, um, I, I will say something that I know people will absolutely hate now, but I actually have not played this properly at all yet. <laughs> I, I've been busy. I've been busy moving house and going through divorce. So by the time like I finished the Horizon Zero Dawn uh, second one came out on PC and I don't have PS5 anymore. So I was playing that, and then I was like, "Oh yeah, I'm doing developers with daughter." I haven't actually played. That. <laughs> I played a few couple of levels. The one I really liked, uh, like my favorite ones, but I didn't like properly sat down. I will do that. I'm back to stream now, so I probably will be streaming the whole games now. So just is there but uh, I, I seen th this level though I've definitely seen some of the stuff um, about Atlantis uh, war so I can't read Kyodai Natla Robo War Machine and Escape from Atlantis was scrapped from Terminator 1 but fully planned for anniversary edition assuming that Boston and Stone made it into Terminator 1 itself how would it differ to the final concept intended for the remake, given the less powerful engine? Were the anniversary edition Atlantis planned for to make the? I, I don't know if you know any of that. I, I... Yeah, it's interesting. I don't. I don't really remember that. It's something that Rich Morton, because he was actually um, tends to be in the design meetings right from the 
you know, even on Tomb Raider 1, he's almost like the dad of the whole game series because he was there all the way along, I think, and had some sort of contribution to every game. Um, but I don't remember anything about the War Machine thing. I remember that coming up again with Anniversary Edition. We were definitely, there was supposed to be more of an action-packed finale to the game, for sure, you know, because you just fight Natla, which is a pretty poor boss battle, and then you just slide down a slope, and the game ends, doesn't it? And it's just that... That's it. It's over. And it's like, well, that one. We kind of imagined she was going to be running and escaping from the thing with it all collapsing around you. In fact, it was even worse than I remembered, actually, when I did play it. I, I thought we'd actually done some falling masonry and stuff, but I apparently we didn't even do that. So uh, it's a camera wobbled. I remember programming the camera wobble. Um, so unfinished business when we, you know, Phil Campbell came along and wanted some ideas for what to do for the extra levels we were like well there was supposed to be more of an action pack exit from the um thing so that's kind of what made the couple of levels he did for unfinished business um which is why they're quite action-packed i think although i haven't played them recently so i can't remember uh, you, you can play them in here uh you can they're, they're part of the remastered uh we will yeah play, no by the way. pretty cool yeah it? yeah i haven't but, played I, them I, you haven't uh, they're so difficult uh, they're like so like you think their classics are uh, they just went like to a level particular unfinished business the first action pack we will play mm. the golden packs next saturday by the way not today next saturday just could not organize everyone the entire team will be present everyone who worked on all the three games will be with us um uh, there is a question here from Mark, uh, was the idea of feeling isolated and alone part of the original design, or was it part of the concept, or just a happy accident? I think most things were a happy accident on Tomb Raider. <laughs> we were kind of feeling our way a little bit, um, you know. So yeah, I think it was kind of more. I mean, that's uh, early on. We were even questioning what you know, where you're going to be running around collecting almost like coins and things, you know, was Laura going to be running around these places really Tomb Raider and finding things all over the place? That was an early conversation. Um, I think Toby probably had a bit of a clearer idea in his head what he wanted to try and achieve. Um, so he had to keep constantly going, no, no, guys, no, that's not the way we want to go. Um, but, um, yeah, we did sort of gradually, um, yeah, it was a happy accident. I think also, it was obviously, it was, again, a limitation. We couldn't do that much. So you ended up running around um very quietly for long periods of time um I'm ironically on Tomb Raider 2 that was the biggest bit of feedback we got from Tomb Raider 1 was people go oh I could have done with a bit more action so we put more action in Tomb Raider 2 and people went oh I could have done with less action <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> I'm one of those people saying there's just too much <laughs> yeah so you yeah, know uh, I noticed the mummies are way too more pissed at us at their, at their master's game and harder to kill. I, I, the mummies are demonic in Tomb Raider 1. I, I don't know how bad they are. <laughs> uh, uh, they're, they're pretty bad. I, I found it pretty bad. It's, it's kind of funny because I've programmed them, so I'm getting killed by my own creations there. <laughs> but um, they kind of... They kind of um, the mummies, the exploding money, mummies, came out of the fact that um, those exploding statues that are at the end of... Oh, I seem to be too to Hogan a lot, but yeah, those two centaurs that exploded, you know, that was one of those Toby went, oh, it'd be great if the centaurs, you know, they were statues and they explode and then these monsters attack you. So we did that and I came up with that thing and I went, once I programmed that code, I went, oh, we could use this. We could use this for blowing up things. And so I made all the Atlanteans explode and all the bits damage you, which was pretty vicious actually, but... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I got killed quite a lot by them myself this time. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? Uh, there is a co comment on the ending actually, where you uh, it's such a crazy and creative ending and series uh, uh, of levels. I never seen anything like the take on Atlantis or the bold decision to make for the first game. Yeah, Atlantis was quite interesting. Yeah, the flesh and blood everywhere. Um, yeah, but... yeah. That was um, there was quite a sort of. I mean, you get some of those kind of golden bits as well. There was a kind of a, Toby wanted something. <laughs> I think Toby's Brit said to um, Heather, "I want something really weird, you know, not something that people haven't seen before." And she really struggled. She kept trying different ideas, and then finally, um, 
got the idea of doing this kind of fleshy stuff actually is my wife's a doctor and she used some of her anatomy books um <laughs> to scan in some images and put them in and that's how you got this kind of super freaky atlantis that of course no one's expecting as atlantis is always normally portrayed as a sort of lovely place that's um like it's on a roman temple or something but we went completely against what people were expecting but that was kind of the idea of the story that you know all these myths and legends have come from actually this kind of crazy advanced you know technology rather than actually being um we seemed original at the time, but it's quite a common sort of story nowadays. I think. This is a question for Tom from Teranatse. Was the what was the biggest challenge programming the AI? Is there something you remember being really proud of? Uh, that's an interesting question. It's an interesting question with Gavin in the room because Gavin built the AI system. And yeah, what you going to say is replacing my crap stuff with something well, that actually was better. Yeah. Well, no, I mean. <laughs> It's one of these interesting things is that you kind of as a player you go, oh, I'm not sure about, oh, I could do better. And then kind of obviously when it comes to it, it's it's a lot harder than you think it is, especially when, I mean, the thing that I think was really remarkable about your AI system was that it works on PlayStation. I mean, it's, you know, the, the, basically for something to do AI that well, when you had so little memory and so little time for it to do it, it's, it's kind of remarkable, really. So it was one of those ones where I, I, I did try and fix what I, you know, what as a player I felt were exploits, you know, where you could just sort of jump on a rock and something would run around and you could just shoot it. So I tried to fix those things. The single biggest thing I'm most proud of is is actually for Tomb 4 was getting the jumping baddies in because I felt that basically putting the baddies in where Lara did, couldn't feel safe. What I wanted to do was make, make the player not feel safe anywhere. So, you know, you could jump to a, you could jump to somewhere and for the baddie to jump after you, that that was the kind of I felt my kind of biggest contrib single contribution in a way was just yeah getting the enemies jumping after Lara, uh, but um no, but no it was uh sorry no go on go on go on no I was just you know but I mean you know I mean the other thing I think was just being kind of influenced by playing a lot of kind of things like a uh, uh, Zelda games so trying to make enemies that were more than kind of just bullet sponges you know that that kind of you could use them to solve puzzles or use them mm. to do slightly other th you know other things other than just shoot them um but then i used to get told off by jeremy for or, or at least you know i'd try and sort of like do things that made it harder for the player to just shoot things and then it was like all the players wanted to do was just shoot things so and you know sort of jump backwards and forwards and auto target and so it was it was always the dilemma with Tomb Raider really is that you you wanted to change things but then p people got cross if you changed anything so uh do you, any of you know yeah, what was kind of the mummies <laughs> <laughs> the mummies uh in in the Atlantis cabin I do not know who voiced them at all no <laughs> um, I wasn't involved in the sound stuff at all um uh, no, okay, so, um, sorry. Uh, going back to what we were saying, sorry, I interrupt you with that question. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's, that's all right. No, I was just going to say about the AI because it was kind of interesting. Because right at the beginning of the game, you've got um, the wolf and the bear that have actually got quite a lot of animations and could mm -hmm. do things. Because Toby was like, oh, "Yes, yeah, make them wander around and rear up the bear, can rear up and all this sort of stuff." And we kind of put that in, and then very quickly realised that. They got a life expectancy of about five seconds, so it was a complete waste of time. So you might as well just run around, bite yeah. you, and that was it. You know, that was it because they were going to be dead. The wolves wandering off and sort of, you know, going to sleep. You sometimes come across a wolf asleep, but he's yes, about it. Um, so yeah, we didn't do any of that for the later stuff. So, and as Tom said, then then I got them running all around the levels and be able to trace around. Which I think when playing it, you got that in the. Palace Midas, there were enemies yeah. that shoot at, and they run away for a bit because mm. they had all this stuff to, you know, they were either violent or I can't remember what the other one was violent or timid. Not passive, timid, yeah, timid, yeah, you're right. Timid, timid, they ran away. Violent, they would yeah. just keep coming at you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's the hilarious thing about Winston. Winston, he is in fact violent because he <laughs> will hunt you down. He just doesn't have any attacks when he gets to you. <laughs> <laughs> violent Winston. that's something i'm not going to get out of my head now for quite a while but we get that most now uh, someone said about the who voiced the mummies nervous NPC says share i agree share voice the mummies uh, 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 uh sounds like <laughs> but kanka says uh Tihokan's tomb was in Cambodia in earlier versions of the story do you remember the reason moving it to greece no 
is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Probably because we had some Greek textures, and that's what we got at that point. So I think we were just uh, so yeah. Um, Cutscene coming up. I mean, the story changed around a lot all the time. It was all over the place. Honestly, it was only when Vicky came on that she kind of. <laughs> pinned down uh, Toby and made him sort of stick to a story because that's part of the reason Neil ended up building levels because he was supposedly to go to do the FMVs but it was just uh, I think Toby changed the story one too many times and Neil went that's it I'm just building levels now <laughs> uh, did you work on the so, Saturn yeah. portal though? that's from Troy um that was Jason, Jason Gosling. That he worked exclusively on trying to get the thing to work on Saturn, and Saturn was a pain in the butt because it could only draw squares, which is a pretty you know, <laughs> major um, restriction on a 3D stuff because everything's drawn out of triangles on any modern hardware. But the Saturn could only draw squares, so it was just a could because um, Sega had planned it as a high, you know for doing 2D games, and they kind of only at the last minute I, when they got wind of what. Um, Sony were doing gone, oh, we better make it do 3D. <laughs> um, and allegedly it had two, because it had two CPUs as well. It had, the reason it had two CPUs is because they wanted to do Virtua Fighter and that two players, so they had one on each CPU. So wow. it was a nightmare piece of architecture to, for programmers. So Jason just spent his entire time trying to get the thing to work on that. Um, PlayStation was a lot easier. Uh Question for both of you. I heard you got a lot of the pictures from magazines and books. You just mentioned one. Uh, what was the, your process for getting textures for the classic Tomb Raiders? Were they originally designed for 64 by 64 pixels? I think people got them from wherever. I think the artists were, I mean, they were literally going down the, you know, the <laughs> library and things like that and just, just hiring yeah. out books. I mean, stuff that nowadays you wouldn't get away yeah. with, you know. You're, oh, they're just scanning some pictures straight out of this copyright book and just stick them in the game why not but also the idea that you'd actually go i mean nowadays that the idea that you'd go to a library to get a book out to get a picture from rather than just go on the internet and use google yeah. so it's just like crazy but yeah well, i mean yeah. sorry tom okay no all it's gonna say but yeah people there were actually field trips out to the british museum and stuff for for, for doing that i remember for the artists for the designers mm. yeah there's quite so, a lot of uh, british museum stuff in the uh tomato for um uh, because I, I, that was one of my missions to go into the British Museum for the third time, I think. But when I learned that a lot of the stuff was actually taking photos in the British Museum, I was like, oh, yes, this, I recognize that, I recognize that. And actually, uh, in Derby itself, around the place where Ashbourne Road Studios used to be, you can actually spot quite a bit of texture work from the walls and buildings, particularly for the oh, manor wow, area. Yeah, <laughs> sounds quite like for the manor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tomb Raider Manor in yeah. the second game, you can see the brickwork and stuff like that is very similar to what you see in the game. Yeah, they weren't lazy kids. They were just <laughs> <involved. laughs> right. Get out of the oh, I've got two hundred yards from the office. I don't know. I'll just take a photo of this wall and come home. <laughs> Uh, how do you feel knowing that uh, to this day the Ark of Covenant still sits by Lara's front door in some ways? I wow. know, I mean, that's a example of something we just would not get away with um, <laughs> nowadays. I mean, you know, how we did get away with things like that, and LucasArts didn't care, but anyway, we did. But um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, there's uh, one about Saturn again. Uh, core members would like to see Sega's uh, 3D accelerator cartridge for Saturn, which could run conversions for Tomb Raider 2. I have no idea what that is talking about whatsoever. So no. if they were, it wasn't me. <clears throat> okay. Uh, is the Act of Covenant actually copyrighted by anyone? Harry, I just think we used the exact copy of what. <laughs> It looked like in uh, Indiana Jones, so I think that one probably is, you know, not supposed to be copied because it's not like the Ark of Covenant. No one knows what the Ark of Covenant actually looks like. Yeah. Uh, yes, it doesn't really exist, but um, yeah, so <laughs> as far as I know, it's a pretty carbon copy of the one that appeared in um, Indiana Jones. <laughs> yep. It's just a little joke, obviously, that right. Lara actually had it, not um, Indiana Jones. Did you say some of the developers are on this? Because uh, I actually got a question for someone, which is because I okay. saw when someone brought brought up the um, brought up the inventory screen a moment ago, 
uh, the cr the red cross for health packs was green, which we had to do for Tomb Raider three, but obviously in Tomb Raider one and two they were still red. Yeah. So the texture must have been changed in this in the remaster, I which the, I mean, uh, you know, for legal uh, reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Uh, so what, what was the question? <laughs> it was just, why, why, it was just why, basically... why was it <laughs> changed? Well, no, I know, I know, it had to, I know for legal reasons we had to change it for Tomb Raider yeah. three, but it's interesting that they've, that they've presumably had to change it for all of the all of them, even the original one and two, um, on oh, right. the remaster. I see version. what you mean. Yes, uh, I think it was Raina who worked on the textures. So I'm, I'm pretty sure she's here. She might tell us. Ah, uh, there we go. We had to remove all yeah, depictions yeah. of red crosses from both of the SD and HD yeah. versions. <laughs> So that was yeah. that was one one of our one of my traumatic sort of war stories was we had to we had to do that literally I think it was like twenty four hours before the gold pressing of Tomb Raider three. <laughs> it was like suddenly we got this notice you've got to take out we've got to remove change all of the Medipack textures because uh, yeah because of the, the red it is owned by the Red Cross the um, yes the symbol wow well, no well, we obviously got away with that I think it, it was. <laughs> Yeah, people are starting to get wise to all this stuff. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So ridiculous. The advantage uh, of building a game before the internet was really a thing, I think. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, yeah. There is a question for Tom, and he will uh, like this one because last time we streamed Tomb Raider 3, he mentioned the monkeys, and someone actually drew a picture of, <laughs> of that. <laughs> I sent you that email. Uh, so this is from Nervous NPC. Seeing a lot of debate about the monkeys changing their AI from friendly to aggressive in Tomb Raider 3. Do you remember mm. working on that? Do you want to tell us more about <laughs> I, do, I do. Well, I mean, again, I'm worried now that I misremembered it. But basically, this was an example of where I wanted to do something different. So I basically made the monkeys friendly. And not only were they friendly, but they would show you where secrets were, where, where medipacks were, or where keys were. If you left them alone, they would show you things of interest in the level. But of course, everyone just shot them because that's what you do in Tomb Raider. Is if there's an animal, you shoot it. So it moves. I don't. I think it, it wants <laughs> so now. if it moves, you shoot it. So <laughs> I don't think anyone seemed to realise for quite a long time that monkeys were potentially friendly. Um, now I'm trying to remember if uh, whether there was a level where they started off aggressive for some reason. But I don't. I, that's possible that I did that. But in general, the monkeys were your friends, and you and you shouldn't shoot them. Uh, uh, but ah. Uh, there might have been one where where one of the monkeys ran off with something. Actually, I yes, that, that I can't did happen. Remember that maybe there was a key. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I, I can't remember which level it was. I know in the Lost Artifacts they do that quite a bit. They run away with with your stuff, um, but that's obviously a different team of thing. Uh, those things. <laughs> uh, Highland Cowboy asking about uh, why? Do you remember why the character Colonel Arthur Hamilton Graves was dropped in the early concept stage of Tomb One? Uh, again, it was just this kind of story, Toby trying to work out a story that was going to link everything together. I mean, he had this kind of cool cutscene that was um, involved Hamilton Graves. I don't know, getting the first part of the um, scale on. And um, I mean, I've got a, my screen on my computer that I've always used. I mean, Tom might remember has Hamilton Graves on it. So the model even had got <laughs> built um, and Toby did me a little kind of um, background for my screen. He was doing one for everybody and I got Hamilton Graves and Lara in a red dress and stuff and a couple of the kind of guys in their pith helmets and all that. None of these characters made it into the game in the end. That's how much Toby just kept changing his mind. Um, so I don't know because it was kind of a cool scene. I do remember even the early animatic of it. As you know, they're going in. It was almost a bit like Lara getting the sword, uh, the dagger in the um, second one. You know, they were going in there and they they got killed in the room, or that was what it was kind of drawn. They were going to happen. They were kind of lights went out as they took the thing, and they all got killed by what would have been Atlanteans. But I don't know why it got dropped because it was kind of a cool idea. I think it just got turned into that kind of little bit of. Um, the monk talks about it, I think, or vaguely talks about it. I think at the end, the beginning of, um, I can't remember the names of the level. That's how bad it is. See, the, the fans know the names of every, everything about this game more than we do at this point. I'll tell you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> 
that's so often happens in when we when we do these calls ash is that someone says about something and i've got i've got no memory at all of the even the existence <laughs> of that thing never mind how it works yeah like i couldn't that room with the electricity i couldn't remember how the hell you're supposed <laughs> to get through that without getting electrified and it's like god yeah there must be a way but <laughs> i could not remember <clears throat> uh Gavin, you worked in a couple of levels for Tomb Raider games. Which ones were they? Okay, so Tomb Raider 1 I didn't. Um, well, I kind of helped out Heather with the um, system level on Tomb Raider 1 because that was the one with the water going up and down. And it's a very complicated level, isn't it? And it's very confusing. In fact, by hilarity, it was the one that I found hardest and I had to look up in Stella's thing about three times to get out of. <laughs> It was very funny because I spent the longest helping out with that level, helping because I played that. Because what will happen? I spent, hey, guys, have a give a go, give us some feedback. And it was totally ad hoc. And I happened to be the first person who played the system. And I ran into the level and I ran, I picked up a key, unlocked the door, and ran out level. And it went, done. And I went, Heather, I've just finished your level in one minute, 30 seconds. I don't think I should have done that, should I? And she was like, no. <laughs> so I helped her out and we moved things around. It took ages getting that level to work because all that up, down water and making it all, you know, so it didn't break and you couldn't find a shortcut. I don't know if you can find a shortcut. Now. Maybe you can, but it was a nightmare level to get working. But uh, so that was a, my only sort of real contribution on level design on the first one. On, on the second one, it was... Um, venice for goodness sake with a boat because yes me and uh Stu had made the boat and we got it right racing around in a kind of test level and heather had been building um you know bartoli's hard hideout in the opera house and she went oh, i just can't build any more venice levels i've got to move on we're running out of time <laughs> it's like what are you talking about heather this is the boat level we've got to put the boat level we're not gonna you know this is one of our major new features so I basically went away at that weekend and just worked solidly for two days putting together the basis of that level. Um, and the thing that I regret is I my design for that, because I've seen the other level designs that these people do that are beautifully drawn and all that. I had literally, it was a proper back, back of the pack thing. I'd written on a half a sheet of A4, the basic, it go that, you're going to have a boat, you're going to do this, you're going to race it around, you're going to do this on a sheet of paper and I found it about five years later and looked at it and went, when I was clearing my desk and went, ha ha, funny, and threw it away. <laughs> I kind of regret that because that was a bit of an artifact in its way. But um, yeah, so I built the basis of that and then gave it to Heather and went, look, and she went, oh, that's great, but you're texturing shit and I'm going to fix it. And she added more <laughs> extra bits in the whole, because the canal bit was really just a racing track at that point. I hadn't put in any, she put in a whole bunch of puzzles and she came up with that bonkers idea of going up the ramp and going through the um bridge of size oh, that's which, a fun um, one yeah yeah uh, that, that was one of my favorite moments in the game we had a few moments in tomb raider 2 where we wanted to try and make it so that the players the players did the thing that you would get in an fmv normally they got to do the action-packed sequence so the boat was one of them where we could go yeah you're doing it you're not you know you're not watching a you know a pre-canned sequence and the other one was if you did it driving the skidoo off the cliff at the end of the skidoo level so you went drove it off and but the problem with you do is there were so many during testing there were so many ways the tests broke the levels with those <laughs> bloody skidoo but we had to make the whole game go through i think neil was doing that though he had to go through the whole thing making it so that you could do it all on foot you didn't have to use a skidoo because the testers just kept going back. Ah, I found a way to get your skidoo and blow it up and lose it down a tunnel. And it was like, ah, okay. <sighs> so, yeah, every single thing we had to make it okay. That's why there's little ladders yeah. out of every pit and stuff like that. You were supposed to die, but they found a way of skidding it down the wall yeah. and landing in the bottom. And now the whole layer is stuck at the bottom of the pit. And it's like, that was the vehicles were always a nightmare. They always would break things in different ways, so many different ways. And like you say, I mean, it's like, I mean, it was their job, the, the the QA guys, to find these things. But it's like, why would anyone ever do this in real life? But obviously, people would if you've got enough players. Someone will always do that odd thing. Oh, uh, my favourite on that one was Sony coming out back with a bug. You know, we all be working late, really yeah, tired, yeah. and just want to get the thing finished. It's supposed to go gold, and they came back with a bug on a Friday night that they'd found. I think it was the end. Oh, I can't remember the Opera House or one of them where you go up on a roof. 
to finish it. And they found a bug that if you backflipped over the top of the roof, slid down, caught on the edge, shimmied along and climbed up, you got stuck behind a bit of scenery. Yeah. And, they went, like, and it was like, no one's going to do that. Like, yeah, but we, uh, they might. Yeah. And it was like, but, but, but. Uh, Just so, reload. Yeah, <laughs> weekend of our life gone. <clears throat> Yeah. There's actually a couple of exactly. questions about this level uh, uh, said. Oh, sorry, c carry on, Tom. No, always, all I was going to say was, because of Gav mentioning it, Sony, Sony oh. and you saying just reload. I mean, that was another massive thing is you couldn't necessarily just reload on the PlayStation. That was the big, one of the big TRCs was you've always got to be able to complete the game. And I mean, you know, so you never could have a situation where the player could somehow save the game in a situation where they could no longer complete, you know, so and that was that caused so many sort of uh, you know late nights trying to sort sort, sort that as well hmm. that is that why you added the crystals so people avoid that uh, I mean. well two right one we didn't think we could save everywhere on the playstation because of the lack of memory um wow. and then i implemented the pc version where i did make it where you could save everywhere and went oh the save's not actually that much bigger because it was just a bit of extra data so on two modes mm. two, I went well. Sod that. Then we'll make it so you can save everyone on the PlayStation as well. Mm. And then you crazy bastards, Tom, took that out again for two modes three. Didn't you? We we did, and it's one of those things where it was it kind of. I think I think it was partly due to feedback with people saying, "Oh, it kind of like you know breaks if if you can just save everywhere, it takes away the jeopardy and and things like that." Um, and I think that the actual save crystal again, there was issues with the save crystals, and as much as you could kind of use the save crystal and then find yourself that you'd saved it in a I can't remember in a difficult position or something. I can't remember exactly. That. I do remember there being a bug like if you save the game, if you once you'd save the game two hundred and fifty six times, it broke, which was another one <laughs> that was that was fun uh, on the save card on the PlayStation. Wow. Uh, Sad. Do you want to skip to the cistern so we we'll show that level, and then we're gonna go to Tomb Raider two. Uh, but bef uh, but before we go to Tomb Raider two, I have a question here, which I'm gonna sandwich into. Um, there's two questions. I'm going to start with them into one. Uh, this is from uh, Corp Corpo YK and um, Andres Onka and Helios Corner. So three people. Uh, the naming in the uh, St. Francis Folly for the gods, it's a mix of Roman and Nor Nordic and Greek mythology, even though it's in Greece, but they're using Roman and Nordic gods why yeah that, that, that's down that, that's probably why they put the disclaimer on the remasters because our, our research was uh <laughs> so poor <laughs> on all the games that uh I, I heard that about the chinese levels on tomb raider 2 you know apparently we were mixing dynasties and all sorts of stuff because they were using texts from all over so there's uh, very early on i remember hearing from a chinese person go this is like putting Tudor houses next to Elizabethan, you know, and mixing them all together, you know, all your architects in the UK. That's what you've done with Chinese architecture. It's like, oh, sorry. But yeah. Uh, what, yeah. So, yeah, I think that was just a. Uh, what you've got to remember is <laughs> the team was a bit smaller than we couldn't do, like, you know, modern day Assassin's Creed. You've kind of got your, you kind of, they'll, they'll use it for teaching in school. I can't remember the name of the program now where they were actually using Assassin's Creed to teach history and you could use it because it was so accurate but you know there was we had a team of what 10 or 12 versus assassin's creed probably several hundred people so 10 it, or 12 researchers I exactly yeah. exactly that yeah <laughs> yeah uh, this this level was a nightmare and one of the nightmares <laughs> on this level by the way was those bloody crocodiles so this is the level where i put in the crocodiles and we had ones that could swim in the water and ones that could run around the ground and then of course the water started getting up and down and my my classic one that I remember was Heather laughing her head off and going, Go, I've got to look at this because I hadn't got the coding right and the water had gone down and all the crocodiles that were swimming around were now flying and they, she was getting attacked by flying crocodiles. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's interesting actually because you just remind because what two of the things when I first started on Tomb Raider and I was just kind of really fiddling around with with Gav's code and trying to just get my head around how it works like that. and I remember the crocodiles was one of the earliest thing I did was try to make the crocodiles so they that they could go to the from the water to the land and vice versa again because I knew as a player that one of the exploits was you knew you were safe on land if the crocodile was in the water because it would come out so trying to do that and also but also making them bendy because it seemed that they were quite were they quite straight on the original uh, well, oh that was a classic that was again actually really funny I've, 
I, I said to Toby, look, I, I think the crocodiles, because they weren't very bendy, I said they, they could do with a fast turn or something because it's really easy to avoid them. And I guess this was again late on. He went, oh, okay. And he did an animation of them turning left. <laughs> and I went, well, could I have one for turning right as well? And he went, oh, I haven't got time for that. <laughs> so, so, I just, so I think they could like turn left really quick. They can't turn right. Just stay on its right hand side. <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> It's only when they're on the land, though, on the in the water, they just float around like barges, don't they? That you just that can't do anything. Yeah, yeah. I think I just. But that was the problem, I think, with the AI in general. It was, I got it. So you know, the test levels, they could chase you all over the place. But then they went yeah. in the game. It was like, the, yeah, but they can't climb, so you just got to stand on the block and shoot them. So they just yeah. run around in circles. So. Exactly, because there wasn't enough animation space. I mean, like you say, we didn't have the animations for them to climb in the first one. Mm. Uh, but but yeah, I think I just. I think I just. Well. Oh yeah, go on, go on, go on. Ah uh, yeah. Top. No, no, no. All I was going to say is, I think I actually did the crocodiles by actually hand rotating the, basically just giving them a bit of bend when they turned. So actually, change you know, check all of the joints on the figure, actually just kind of giving them a bit of rotation. I think so. It's a bit, bit hacky. Yeah. But... Anyway, yeah. sorry. So, Braid. I think in some other four, they do come out on the land, uh, so you've made it possible there. Yeah, so they go uh, the Tom water. massively improved the AI of each iteration, I think, over. So maybe four is one of my favorites, actually. Uh, but we'll get back to it when it's remastered, if it's remastered. Um, Lady Rara again, uh, about Lara's braid, because obviously she doesn't have a braid in 21 uh, in the actual yeah. game. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, that was just literally um, Paul was working on that in the early days, and he kind of had this. I think there's a video floating around on YouTube of a really early build where she has got a. We, we have that early build. build. We published it. Uh, not not me, but uh, oh no, it was me. Yeah, uh, top. Uh, yeah, it was. That was it because that was amazing. Yeah. You managed. Yeah. God knows where you found that, but that, I I couldn't believe that because that was a really early um, build when we were just getting stuff vaguely working. She had the glasses as well. Because she, she had it, but it was really it didn't really work right. And again, it was one of those things that Paul just went ah this is just too much work it's using up too much of my time and i'm not really sure how to do it so he kind of you know um got toby to just change it to uh, having it tied up and then on tomb raider 2 it's just while i was working on it i suddenly went ah oh, actually because we've got this this because we then had collision on her body and things like that that had to go in later in the thing i went oh hang on i could use that and i could do that and i came up with a really simple way of doing it i just literally it was a couple of half days where i sort of had something you know, i just fiddle around and went oh, that worked um it's it's not proper physics at all but it it did the job um looked quite nice mm. so i was quite i was always quite proud of that on tomb raider 2 to be honest um even though it was absolutely um, pointless really but it... <laughs> chris from Raidercast found it on one of his old cds and he messaged me saying i think i have something from old times but i'm not sure how to make it work so he sent it to me and I spoke, I think, with Ghostblade, who um, did work on the remasters as well. He is one of the main mm. people who ma made the anniversary edition playable, by the way. And he made a cool. playable within like a second. And they're like, oh, we have actually, you, you, you had this thing on your CDs for so many years. Like, wait, you know, and he didn't know that he actually had this old alpha, whatever, built of the, with the, with the braid and, yeah, the no, and all that. Yeah. I would never, because I, I remembered that, because that was, you know, a very early test thing. Because that still had the diagonal walls, I think, or at least had one of them was floating around in there, because we had diagonal walls in the early, yeah. very early on in the um, thing, but they got taken out because, again, Paul was trying to get the collision working. He was just beginning to get an idea of just how hard it was going to be to get this character to interact with these um, environments. He went, Again, he went, oh, it's diagonal walls. It's just one too many things. And so <laughs> we took them out, um, even though they worked, you know, from a visual point of view, which was a shame because it added a little bit to, the, you know, made the levels look a bit more organic. Um, but it was only, this is way before the actual proper levels ever got built. So <clears throat> there's a question about the vehicle implementation from Helios, Helios Corner. Uh, what was the most annoying one to implement on the classics? Well, that'd be one for Tom, I think. I think I know. Well, I didn't implement the vehicles. I think I know what Gibby would say, which is probably the car. I seem to remember the kayak was uh, was <laughs> not uh, popular with him and Chris. 
um that that's my memory i think that's right but he may you know I'd, I'd need to let him answer that for himself but i think the kayak was pretty painful getting that getting that working i mean again just because you'd get it in and you think it was done and then someone would discover a way of breaking it yeah so yeah yeah, yeah. i struggled with it <laughs> yeah the boat was quite pleasurable that kind of worked um the skidoo was a bit more of a pain and had way more bugs, but those are the only two vehicles that I worked on. So, I mean, I, I, I kind of worked a bit on the. I mean, again, just just because, yeah. Um, actually, Jeeps was that was Team Four, wasn't it? Not Team Three. Yes. So, well. uh, yeah. So that was kind of quite. They were quite painful because I was doing the AI for that. But again, as always, it was things like you know trying to do AI on a road that was pretty much no big, no wider than a Jeep itself, which was not easy to to, to do the maneuvering and stuff of them. Yeah. The yeah, game kayaks, breakers, yeah, kayak is like so difficult to 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 play as well. But to be fair, that that whole level is quite demonic. To be fair, <laughs> uh, there's um, game breaker CK asking, what was the only thing you always really wanted to implement in the games but never got a chance to? I I don't think there was anything in the end for me. I mean, it was a bit like Tomb Raider two. We kind of got to tidy everything up, or at least that's what I felt. Like. I felt like we finished. I felt like we kind of done it, and no one else would want to play anymore. And that was obviously Tom and the crew showed that there was plenty of life in it um, after that point. But um, so it was kind of interesting. Tomb Raider One was sort of a mad rush, and then came out, and like I say, ends with them sliding down a slope, and mm. you know that's it. And that was meant to have a big action packed finale. But with Tomb Raider Two, we actually even though we were working like absolute lunatics, we kind of got to do everything we planned, set out to do and um, add things like Winston got added two weeks before we went gold. I mean, that's mad, right? <laughs> um, that was just because Joss, who was the animator, had nothing better to do. He tested all levels and all that. And he had, obviously, because we weren't putting anything new anywhere. He came in, he was French and just went, I've got an idea. Why doesn't Lara have... That's my French accent. Why doesn't she have... <laughs> um, <laughs> A butler and i was like a butler now lara's not the kind of woman who'd have a butler you know it's a very french thing to assume that an upper class um woman would have a butler but then i thought oh no i suppose she could have it if you know it come with a house kind of thing because it supposedly came from her aunt i think her house didn't it so so he literally did built winston and of course winston only had two animations i think it was like walk around and stand with the shaky tray um and so he we had it in in two days just you know very very quickly um uh and then that character so i would never have guessed that character was going to become such a sort of um beloved character that you know uh, we didn't know about the whole or at least i didn't know about the whole locking in the fridge thing that was a bit of a surprise <laughs> <clears throat> could you actually shoot because i'm trying to remember whether whether you had guns ever at a point where Winston was around in the first. No, we didn't. Have that. You, you guys did it in two rounds. What we were yeah. going to do, the, the one that Josh wanted to do, but I, and I went bald, we didn't have time to do it, was when we built Lara's home or had Lara's home, he wanted Winston to be there, but to have a blunderbuss and to wander around yeah. shooting at the ceiling yeah. every time he fired, but we didn't get around to doing that. Because that was what I remember. So I just wanted to check. I wanted to check that I hadn't misremembered. So I remember adding in Tomb Raider 3, because the trouble was he, you had guns and Winston was around. So people just shot it, shot him, which obviously is not really what you want. So that whole thing about just holding up the sh the tray to protect himself was purely so you didn't have this kind of horrific thing of, of people <laughs> just sh repeatedly shooting Winston, because obviously that's what people would do. So, uh, yes. Mm. Awesome. Yeah, no, we we purposely didn't have any guns. I don't think Laura, Laura Strait didn't use her guns at home. I mean, she obviously no. yeah, just reserved them when she was out. Um, There's a question. Just the wildlife from... attacked her. <laughs> to be fair, I always wanted to get him killed, and I know there was like some uh, very basic level that so he could just move objects around the level. I can't remember how it was called. I think TR View, I think it was called by someone, um, and I managed to move the. Um, quad bike in Tomb Raider 3 into the actual manor itself. And when you drive on the quad bike through Winston, it's just the 
splash of blood is coming through him, but he's still alive somehow. <laughs> really, really annoyed me. I was like, I want you dead. <laughs> There's a question from Terra that said, did you know that at the time of the games had control moves that were, that were never explained in the tutorial levels, but you could have pulled them of bordering on... Oh, I'm, I'm going to read it back I, again. <clears throat> Right. Did you know at the time the games had control moves which were never explained in the tutorial levels, but could have been pulled on bo uh, bordering on exploits? Example like fake grab and walk jump. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there was there was meant to be those the swan dive and the mm. kind of yeah. handstand move, kind of vaguely secret moves. Um. But yeah, I don't even know what those two moves are. They sound like, you know, things that people have discovered you could do. I mean, obviously that. I, th I think it's still a problem today. I mean, I think in some, in, in a lot of ways, you know, Tomb Raider did a great job with it for Tui. But I mean, if sorry, in training, you know, first time user experience. Um, but you always run into the problem in that people get bored. If you tell them everything, people get bored. So you kind of need to give a subset that people, you know, you give it as much information to get people going on the game, but you can't teach people everything and the kind of you know in the, in the tutorial because i think they just wouldn't wouldn't you know it would be it would be dull oh yeah yeah another great one <laughs> that, that was toby's instruction to me on pierre he said you're going to meet him multiple times it'd be really cool to have a character you keep meeting but he runs off <laughs> and i went where and he went i don't know he runs off I went, where where's he going to run off and he went, oh, I'll work it out. Oh, this is what it was like working with Toby, by the way. And uh, so I was like, um, okay, I don't know. I'll make him so, you know, he said there could be a door. He could run through a door or something. It was like, well, yeah, but what if I chase after him and, you know, get through the door Just as well? Yeah. So <laughs> so it, it got to the thing of, um, you know, when Laura, he goes off screen, after you've got, it, got him enough time, he goes off screen, you can't see him, he disappears. And initially, I had it a few seconds because I thought he can't really just disappear straight away. I have a few seconds, but then Toby himself actually ran around chasing him around the level, going, "Look, you can't get him to go away, Gav." And it's like, oh. so in the end, I made it so it was the moment, the moment he goes out of sight, he disappears. So this, that's why he runs around a pillar and he's gone. He's gone. This but impossible you can, thing. You can look away from him to make him disappear. That's yeah. Why haven't you done this impossible thing that I asked for, Gav? I know. I know. <laughs> Uh, a question from Pot Pots again. Uh, in early script D, Atlanteans were aliens, uh, and that was only frozen for transport to their home planet for trial. Were they still aliens in the finished version, or just enhanced humans? There's no mention of them being aliens, aliens anywhere, and they just bury Natla forever. I have no idea. I actually have no idea. I, I don't, I don't know not. what they... What the Atlanteans were meant to be by the end, I think they were. Um, so yeah, maybe it's a mystery. I think it's uh, it's one of those things that Laura have to find out another day. I think. Uh, let's see. Uh, what else? Um, could it be the the great work on the remastered motivates some people from the original? Uh, that's um, the original driven the into the last level together for the old time's sake. From this magician, uh, I, I know Andy Sandham is doing a few actually. Um, is Andy he? Sandham, no. yes, uh, he is in touch actually with a few level editors. I see, I personally made an email chain with the with his permission, so I'm sure I, I, I'm pretty sure he's like using the tomb editor, I think it's called the latest one that was made by fans. So, yeah, Andy Sandham is is doing something and and his students actually doing something as well so he uh, ho hopefully cool. will join us a bit later but yeah uh, yeah it's, um, but... it's kind of interesting playing it actually after all this time because it has it's not getting away from it. it has got quite a unique feel that you don't really get in um model modern games it's something i've thought about a lot you know it took me years to kind of really realize how important the grid was to the whole gameplay really mm um because that was that was kind of a if you like a happy accident that that became such a um you know it was obviously a technical re restriction but you've seen as the games have kind of moved away from having that technical restriction it's become less precise and you, there's a lot of things that um be interested to have your views actually on this tom about 
doing things like the jump and the grab, having to use separate buttons, it makes it feel yeah. more perilous. There's no doubt about it. And having to hang on and you can't just, you know, some of the modern games, you can just pretty much sit there and just go, oh, just go and make a cup of coffee yeah. with your carrot, apparently perilously hanging on the side of a cliff, but they, they're going to still be there when you get back. And that you've kind of lost that. And I find in sort of things like Uncharted and stuff, you just don't get that same, even though it looks like you're doing some terrifying things, you don't ever feel any tension. Whereas in Tomb Raider, playing, replaying it, I felt tense when I was high up because I knew at any moment I was cocked up, I was going to fall and she was just going to die. And it, I, yeah, it's kind of an interesting one. That you kind of lose, lost it that is, a little bit. It is really interesting. I'd really like to know whether people who, ha who hadn't played Tomb Raider before, whether they would cope with those kind of retro controls or whether it would just feel <clears throat> too clunky for people who had been brought up on on, on basically Assassin's Creed and, and Uncharted and that basically, you know, things that guide you to, and in some ways, you know, I, I understand why, you know, there are, there are things to be said for kind of getting rid of the friction and for it to be easier to control. But like you say, it loses that sense of jeopardy, definitely. Um, and all the yellow painted things that seem to have come exactly. as well. You go just, here, yeah. you go here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, trying to trying to work out how you would navigate through St. Francis Folly. I mean, you know, just trying to looking up and just seeing right how how am I going to do this? Uh, it's just one of the kind of you know absolute archetypal things of of Tomb Raider. Yeah, and the fact that essentially you could make your way through. I don't imagine that two any two players would play through that in the same way. You'd be yeah. going up and down and to different rooms in the different orders and choosing your way down going oh i think i can jump across that gap and it wasn't very prescribed whereas yeah. in a modern game it would be this is where you're going to jump from here to get to that ledge because that's, that's the way you're going to go that's right and i mean all credit to all credit to the, to the level designers as well i mean they did what to go back to something we talked about this at the start of this is that you know they used lighting in a way i mean it didn't you know it didn't go you must go here here and here but i think lighting was used in such a way that it did to some degree give you hints about where whereabouts you could go in the level and you know so i think it was a it was in a much more subtle direction hmm. well also i think you were much more back in the day um i wouldn't say people were more patient but you kind of accepted you were going to spend a fair amount of time confused in the game yeah um and on Tomb Raider 2, when I was, you know, it became a thing. We got into a much more of a flow of the designers did a level and then they give it to me and I was the first person to play it and I'd write down everything I could see that mm. I thought they should try and fix. And one of my rules was if I get stuck, and it sounds too long nowadays, if you get stuck for five minutes, we need to change it or give yeah. people a hint as to the direction. Yeah, um, yeah. Not that so. in the day now. You get stuck, you get stuck. <laughs> Uh, yeah. This is going to be the final question before we move on to Tomato 2. We also have a comfort break in case you guys need a comfort break. I need one. I definitely need to be. Uh, Ikari Metal Slugger, uh, throughout the series, what are the levels that you are most proud of and the ones more disappointing, which how they turned out? I can't really it doesn't mean that, that if you did not made yourself, but like the ones that you uh, played maybe from your colleagues and stuff. Yeah, I, I think I was never very keen on Natla's Mines, if I'm honest. I thought it was kind of, it was a bit, Neil was getting a bit, some of the puzzles in that were bonkers. I mean, when he, I got a couple of them working, it was like, the one I particularly didn't like was the one with the fuse, where there's a fuse on a conveyor belt, and it's just sat there in front of you. And I went to Neil, but she'd just reach in and grab it, and he went, yeah, but she can't. She hasn't got an animation for it. I was like, oh, come on, Neil. That's not a great reason. It, it looks like it's right there. I could get that, you know. Having to make her go off and do all this other stuff when it's right there. And, oh, I, can't, I can't reach out and get it. So, I, was some... so I thought, and then the other bit where he said, oh, this button makes, the, you know, can get the boat to move for me. And I went, okay. And I went, you're pulling a switch in a random room, making a motorboat. What the hell is meant to be going on here, Neil? And it's like, oh, people won't care. <laughs> <laughs> so right. I thought that particular level, it was a slightly, you know, there was a slight lack of, I mean, it's bonkers everywhere. It's bonkers in um, oh. Tomb Raider anyway. But yeah, I thought he was kind of this, getting a bit sort of can I just lazy, say this, I think. This is exactly the sort of behaviour that used to make me cross. Jump it, the, the, the old somersault in back from left to right repeatedly while shooting things. That's, to be honest, why I made them wait. <laughs> no, no, no. 
It's no, fine. that's why I made him explode and things like that. Because yeah, yeah. by that point, it was obvious that was the tactic. So I know, I know, I know. Make them shoot things at you. Make them explode if you're too close. That's the only way we can get her. But I'd always be trying to get him. Go, can we just take this out? Two and three, two and four. And it's like, no, no, we can't take that out. It's like iconic that you jump from side to side and shoot things. Oh God. Mm. Yes. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Didn't mean to no, no, I was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, boobs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> were there boobs in the first one? I think I think it's like she was naked, wasn't she? The, the she was lady yeah. on his jackets. Yeah, they sensed it. I didn't know that. Did not know that. Banditits. No more tits. <laughs> uh, about levels, Tom. Uh, are there any levels that you're particularly proud of? I mean, again, it feels like that you're asking. You know, you're asking the wrong person because I did. I did. <laughs> really get involved in the level i kind of would give advice so i'd kind of i'd sort of what i'd quite often do is give people a set of tools with the ai and say you know this is how i suggest you kind of use it when, when things like you know searching for cover or guards or that sort of thing you know and so i might make suggestions but i wasn't really actively involved in doing tomb Raider, in, in doing the levels what i did like i mean I, I really liked that everyone had their own style you know it's like um pete's for instance pete's levels Pete Duncan always looked like they were higher resolution than everyone else's because his, his textures were just amazing, you know. So you'd get amazing textures from Pete, and then you get kind of Andy's craziness, this sort of like, you know, just really pushing the boundaries of what you could do. And like everyone almost felt like they had their own little sort of signature techniques. And I mean, the same for in, in Tomb Raider 1 and 2 as well. I mean, you could sort of definitely tell Heather's, um, Heather's levels. Yeah, from, Heather, from Heather likes going for the architect from the nice environment and Neil yeah. like just trying to kill you as yeah, the yeah, most exactly. evil ways he could think of. So, um, and I, so that was yeah. the difference between those two guys. And that was really good. And it, I mean, again, it, it, that's something that I think that you wouldn't see in a game nowadays. You know, you'd make sure everything was homogenized, you know, every, or you'd have to stand. And again, you understand why you do want to do that in some ways, but mm. in, in other ways, it feels like it's lost an, lost an element there of just kind of, you know, different having that different characteristics those different traits from each of the level designers and i think that's it i mean let's let's face it i mean that was the biggest thing we had was the ridiculous amount of freedom to do whatever the hell we yeah. liked yeah throughout the that's whole series we were, you know put in winston because we felt like doing it you know yeah. we just everything in the entire game you guys tried to kill her off for god's sake we, you know? did. <laughs> so, we did our best <laughs> we tried and she's still alive <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to have a quick break now uh, so you can um, go grab a cup of tea or go pee like myself and we'll be back with Tomb Raider 2. Uh, I will put us onto the trailer clip for now. Um, so back in a couple of minutes. Um, don't go anywhere. We'll, we'll continue playing. I mean, you guys go go anywhere, but I mean, the viewers don't go anywhere. Uh, set yours <laughs> if you want to have a com uh, comfort break. Free. Also, you were getting quite a few shout outs set for your uh, controls and stuff like that. You'll read them on the VOD, I'm sure. Thanks. <laughs> All right, see you in a few minutes. Thanks. <laughs> see you in cool. a sec. And we're back. Uh, Tom is away, so we're not going to go without him. Now I'm going to go back to the chat and see what's happening. Um, Modern games, uh, this is from Angelash, also give you endless carrying capacity, not all uh, local enemies. Oh, yeah, I missed that. And to read one, <laughs> that would be great. Uh... Right. Okay. Right, we're going to wait for Tom. Uh, I have sent an email to Andy again. Hopefully he will join us because we want to play in London and read some comments. So I'm sure he will appreciate them. Or, uh, <laughs> he always laughs that people hate London levels all the time. <laughs> Thank you, WTB. Uh, and great, great to see you all. There was actually about 80 people watching us today. I did not expect that many. I have not streamed for over a year. I think people forgot about me, but apparently not. Thank you so much, everyone. In here, uh, keep your questions coming. Please focus them on the remasters and trade the one, two, and three rather than any other games. We're talking about these games, uh, or, or core design in general rather than anniversary edition or anything like that. Let's focus on these games uh, at hand. Uh, right, this is Tomb Raider 2 now. Yes, please. Um, 
the good thing about the remasters, you can actually f switch between remasters and the original. Even the menu design can be switched and loading screens, which is quite, uh, yeah, quite, nice. quite a nice touch. Fix the logo though to the European one. Oh, can you? Oh, wow! I didn't that. I didn't yeah. know. I I do like Hopefully the American it. logo. Oh no! Uh, uh, I do like American logo. It's nice. You know. I think it's great. I think it's great how <laughs> preserving all this stuff because, yeah. <clears throat> There you go. Quack Factory also agrees that US logo is better. You, but that's just European logo supremacy. But it's so bold, the US logo. <laughs> Love it. The US one is so cartoony. Oh, this is one of Neil's levels. I told you he always tries to kill you. So, the first level of Tomb Raider 2, he tries to kill you. So. Oh, the helicopter. Uh, there is a question wow. from Lindsay Bell. Um, blah, 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 uh, and I'm so Lindsay actually dating someone she met in Derby um, at the <laughs> oh. <Raider> events. <laughs> I did some radio events. Does it make you proud to know your hard work has touched so many people's lives in this way? I'm skipping a lot because some of it is about me. It's not about me. It's about yeah, you. Yeah, hugely, hugely. <laughs> it's. Um... I mean, to be honest, Ash, you getting us all together um, for the 20th anniversary was a pretty awesome thing. And, uh, you know, to be honest, till then, I'd, we had never met any fans because when the games were at their height, we were kind of just working on the games. We didn't really know anything. I think most of the fan mail, I saw a picture one time of a giant bag of fan mail and it was all down at IDOS, you know, and they were going to get all that stuff because people just wrote to IDOS. Um, so we didn't get anything from the fans apart from that one letter which i don't know if you've ever seen of me getting complained at by someone going oh mr rubbery you've made this game too hard it's horrible and i hate you and it was like oh Is, that's the letter that got through to me the only words. one that ever got through to me was this person having a go at me which was nice um what but yeah have so you heard about the yeah, one that's absolutely um, awesome that people are still playing and all that the, the, yeah oh go on oh no uh, there was um, there was a fan mail that um, Andy Sandham sent, showed me the uh, the one on the Star Wars postcard. Uh, yes, that's with a lot of C words. One. Yeah, that was the one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did have a bit of effect on this level, by the way. What? The reason there's a massive great hole in the wall is because I put that hole in because when I played the level that Neil made it, it had a perfect wall then, and he put the key <laughs> down in the thing and, I, and that was one of the levels i got stuck i was going what the heck are you supposed to do here um and then i went oh well this is the first level we've got to guide people so i just smashed a great big chunk out and gave it back to him and went make that look nice <laughs> 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 so you've got a bit of wall missing the um if we're going back to the plex for the to me the 20th anniversary event it, it, it was crazy i i know that rich morton even though he, he was supposed to be there, but he canceled last minute. But uh, he was saying, oh, how many people are going to be there? Like 20. And I was like, no, I, I have people flying from fucking Ukraine and Canada to see you. There's not going to be just 20. There's going to be loads. And you see the amount of people that was just extreme. And it, it just, it felt surreal, to be fair. And, and the good thing about it is as well that it's not just that, you know, that you experience all that and saw how many people still appreciate your work. It's also that Neil actually, before his yeah. you know, passing, managed to experience that as well, which was very nice. Uh, oh, it was also great for us. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I was yeah. going to say, because Neil obviously had moved to um, Thailand. Uh, Thailand and right. uh, yeah, so we hadn't seen him in years. And so it was great to see him, you know, because of course that was the last time we did get to see him. Uh, right, so let's the see. Parallax what effect on the here. ladder is super cool. Oh, and show it to, oh yeah, yeah. They they put like a like fake three D models mm. for the ladders, which is uh, which I noticed when I was playing Nevada level, uh, my favorite one, the compound one. Uh, it, 
my favorite level from Terminator 3, not in general, in the whole Tomb Raider, but I mean, my favorite one in Terminator 3 is the, the compound one. Actually, I like all new other levels in there. And, and surprisingly, London ones as well, which people tend to not like that much, but I actually like them. I like Aldrich. I'm one of the weird ones, I guess. That, the that ladder one reminds me of, we used to, they used to be famous bugs. There were bugs that would kind of get almost like famous status within the studio. And one of them was, um, I think from one of the American QA teams, Corey, someone, but basically it was talking about Laura's hands and feet not matching up with the textures so that they didn't exactly match where her hands and feet went with the textures. But there was just about, just a page of text which just mentioned hands and feet over and over again. And, and it was just like the most crazed thing you've ever seen. So. It's nice to see that Laura's hands and feet do match up with the texture, mm. with the ladders on that on that model in the remaster. Mm. Yes, I think uh, one of the first bugs is... we had was the uh, some tester found the skidoo. Um, if you hit a particular bit of geometry at the right thing, it flew up into the air about a mile. Um, we managed to fix that, but it was absolutely hilarious to watch it happen. <laughs> I remember Hayes mentioning Laura going to the place where no textures live. I can't remember whether that what, what that was caused by, but oh, another one was also when we did compress the animations. It's going back to the earlier conversation about compressing the animations. And I, I put in an extra compression for Tomb Raider two, um, and Jason hadn't got it on his build, and so he loaded it up, and all the animations were Laura <laughs> going like this because every single one was messed up. <laughs> 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 Jiggle, jiggly pop. Um, there's a question from Lion Cyborg. I remember asking in the post streams a few years ago if the assault course was based on the Eliminator and Gladiators, especially from S3. Um, at the time, you guys couldn't remember what the case or not. Has anything come back since then? Like the, you know, the assault course. Sorry, I couldn't, I didn't catch that, Ash. Sorry. Right. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll repeat that. I'm going to get close to the mic. Um, in, um, Lion Cyborg previously did ask like a couple of years ago about the assault course in Terminator 2 and 3, um, whether this was based on the um, Eliminator in Gla from the Gladiator show. Um, and you could, yeah, you couldn't remember. He was wondering if you can remember it now. Yeah, I think it would probably that's probably Rich Morton, I think, um, would would be able to answer that. But I I don't know. Is the honest answer? I'm afraid. Uh, I think it was just. I, th I think it was just. Yep. Really, just. I mean, again, it was just kind of dictated, really, by what what animations Lara had and what the controls what the controls were, really, what things needed to be in the assault course. It was purely there, really, just to give a demonstration of all of those different moves. Mm. What about oh, this, the, question. Um, this question from Karoshi san Do you remember yeah, the so McLaren explodes? <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't actually about the new cheat. It was actually um, just a little joke that I put in. That it's the same. The cheat code, I think, for the PC version. If you yeah. put in the cheat code for the PC version into play into Tomb Raider two, it makes her explode. Um, yeah, if you because if I, I was quite pleased. My, each version yeah. had its own cheat code um, in Tomb Raider One. I don't think that was so true on Tomb Raider Two onwards, but on Tomb Raider One, they all had their own separate cheat codes. And the one I did for um, PC, which was one that I was getting ready, was um, I wanted to make it a bit like um, Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. That the idea was she t turned on the spot three times and then jumped to. <laughs> That was the idea behind it. That's why. You, that's what you did. I didn't know that. I like yeah. that. Because <laughs> everyone like else that. made theirs all button press. And I'm like, oh, let's make yeah, Laura yeah, have yeah. to do a little dance. And it'd be kind of funny. And then, yeah, yeah two yeah, minutes. Uh, it was oh, in let's, the... Let's make that um, make her explode. I, I definitely have this magazine somewhere. I did scan it in for, uh, for the website, for my website. It said there that you have to tap the keys in the rhythm of Spice Girls Wannabe. So if you do it, then she undresses and stuff like that. That 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 that, that was the cheat code. No, no, we did get those triangle. Well, what out. we did about the the nude coat thing was the end of Tomb Raider Two was obviously Lara shooting the camera because we knew people were kind of 
it was getting silly by that point. We just thought we'd, we'd just tease the, oh, and then people go, oh, she's going to tap. Oh, and then she shots, shoots the camera. And it was just like, <laughs> yeah, no, it's not going to happen, guys. This <clears throat> one from um, this magician. Uh, you mentioned Lara's bread. Was there any other technical achievements that you were particularly proud of? Oh, these lights. I was quite pleased with these because dynamic lighting, that was something that went in right at the beginning. And then not, never got used hardly in the Tomb Raider 2. And that is the reason also you get the Yetis in the extremely dark room that I think has become a bit of a fave because when I played that level, I thought, they're not using my lighting enough. So I went in there and <laughs> removed all the lighting in there so you had to use your flares. And then when I gave the level back to Heather, she was like, you say that with lighting? I went, yeah, I know, but it's more exciting and you get to use the flares. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Silent Hill sometimes in Tomato 2. I, I do like to use flares, and I do like that they last so long compared to Tomb Raider 3, where you just go through them. Uh, what about you, Tom? Any other particular technical achievements that you're proud of? I don't think so. I mean, you know, other than kind of when I was talking earlier on about the skeletons and stuff like that. I mean, you know, the, the, there were a lot of good technical achievements in 3 and 4, and it really did push the push the engine further but i mean they were not my achievements you know for for doing the kind of triangular environments and stuff like that also i do apologize i will i just have to go for a moment i will be back in about five minutes or so yeah and i have to warn you i will have to go in about a quarter of an hour that, so yeah. that's will, all right yeah. that's okay yeah. Yeah. uh okay. if doesn't seem to be joining us anyway so we, we, we might skim through to make a three very quickly anyway like some of the levels uh right Oh, this cutscene, yes, the laptop, this is the one I mentioned where you can see Troy's uh, mentioning, a, a, you know, as an Easter egg. That's, uh, it's, yeah. it's Tro I think it says Troy OS is one of the problems yeah. in the chat. I think this was, a, Heather suggested this, that um, Lara using the computer because she wanted to show that Lara was actually also technically, you know, proficient and could hack things and all the rest as well. You know, she wasn't, you know. power. <laughs> yeah, so... Well, of course, that was all it was all about with um, Laura in the original games was, you know, she was meant to be a strong, independent woman who could just do anything that the guys yeah. could do. So. Yeah. <clears throat> Girl power. <laughs> mm. It's like Spice Girls. Actually, in the Spice World, that's terrible film with Spice Girls in it. You can actually see them playing Tomb Raider 1 on the screens in the background. And they, they were not playing them, but in the Spice Bus on the TV screen, mm. there is Tomb Raider 1 menu. Wow. That's cool. I haven't seen that movie since. So. <laughs> I've been a big fan of Spice Girls. It's a terrible film, but yeah, there you go. Troy OS in the top right corner. Awesome. I imagine that was about three pixels in the original. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it was quite very. Just you don't get to see what she says. I think I remember correctly. I do like that they use the PlayStation One loading screens in here because you didn't get to experience them on PC, I believe. So it was like very well, very. As such, because I'd never seen them until I, I got myself an emulator and played PS1 versions. So this, so this is my is level, level you well. mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that was my brilliant idea that was meant to represent her climbing over the fence at the beginning in case you wonder why you dropped down like that. That's what's meant to be happening. <laughs> um, but it was kind of interesting building this because this was on a piece of paper. It was just you, know, you run through a little area and then you go to this next place. Uh, but I discovered what happened for the people like Neil and Heather is as you start building you go oh, it'd be cool if she could go up on those awnings oh it'd be cool if you can do that it'd be cool if that. and you start adding more and more stuff um I think didn't I build a sewer into this which is bonkers I don't know if um Venice has sewers well, I'm not really sure uh, there is a little bit of like I'm not sure if that's what you mean by sewers but yeah yeah there is sewers yes uh, like but they're like canals I think you you get you can like go in the boats through them mm. and you have to like level the uh water up and down a bit yeah that was it up. yeah, I, I, yeah. what i meant is i don't imagine venice for real has such things mind you what am i worrying about it's not like venice you know any of our levels have any um realisticness <laughs> ah, about venice. Them, really. uh, this is actually this bit here where seth is playing right now this is the first time i ever seen someone play tomb raider was this bit here 
and I was playing in the game. It, it was like an arcade that I was I seen it, and I was playing Resident Evil 2 at the time, and I was not impressed by Tomb Raider back then. I was like, I, I don't uh, see this. I don't understand this. And then it's the year 2000, I got myself Chronicles, and I was like, <gasps> and I started like playing all the previous ones, and then Angel Darkness came out. This is how my fandom became. But yeah, this was my first encounter with Tomb Raider 2, seeing this. I, I remember it's quite being funny quite because I probably wouldn't know. <laughs> I probably wouldn't know how to play this level. I mean, it's all I can't even remember this, and yet I, you know, I built most of this. I would get lost on my own level. How scary is that? <laughs> There's uh, my TT ad. Uh, my brother and I were stuck in the first Venice for two hours or so until I shouted, "Just shoot the windows," which of course worked. We were so used to not being be able to shoot things since made the one. That that sound yeah. of broken glass, I really enjoyed. I like like feeling there. Uh, you know why? <laughs> When I was away for a, when I was away for a couple of minutes there, did have you got to Balcony Man? Do you oh, know who yeah. I'm talking oh, about? Oh, the man who stands there on a tiny little balcony running. Inside. Yes, yes. I use that as an example. Whenever I talk about, if I well, I say whenever I've only done it about, but when when I've given talks about the AI in Tomb Raider, I talk about Balcony Man a lot because basically it sort of was shows like uh, the combination of the AI system and level design, how it's so crucial to kind of two to go hand in hand. Cause yes, a man standing on a one by one balcony, there was just nowhere for him to go. If you shot him, yeah. there was nothing for him to do other than run in circles. Yeah, I know. It's terrible. Isn't that? <clears throat> God, this guy's a pro. Oh. Look at the way he did that. I know. I, th I thought that it was very impressive. Yeah. Ooh, they added like a mist effect to the, um, <laughs> Boat to the to the, ex, to the exhaust of the boat. Karoshi uh, San, uh, that that I uh, I don't believe. Um, does it, does any of you two have uh, any three D models kept somewhere in your computers by any chance? Somewhere. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> there you go. That's the answer. Uh, I actually got in touch. Uh, the guy who was um, running a record studio for Tomato 4, 5, and 6, um, Phil Morris, got in touch with me the other day, yesterday. Uh, I think it's because of the news with the BAFTA that Lara became the most iconic video game character of all times. Mm -hmm. You've probably seen that and found my website. It's like, oh, you posted these photos. I took them actually. Here's more. I was like, oh, that's nice. So yeah, I was like, do you know who voice not like that? That's be for my time. <laughs> no one knows. Uh, it's always good. Uh, I just don't remember any of this. I built it. The, yeah. <laughs> I do remember. I was just uh, as we went into that bit with all the. Pillars, I went, oh yeah, I remember that. Because that was kind of based on a system that I'd visited in Turkey that they kind of got a Roman system there. That's kind of all those pillars. It's kind of famous, like, I think. <clears throat> yeah, weirdly, of the team, I'd been to most of the places, that, but it never actually had any influence on anything. <laughs> I'd actually been to Egypt and. Uh, such like before I actually started working on Tomb Raider. I don't think you will know. Well, I did go to China while we were making this. I did go to China, but I didn't get the company to pay for it. I don't know why I didn't think of that. That was such an obvious <laughs> thing to do. <laughs> expenses, expenses. Oh no, madness, right? Yeah. But I didn't. <clears throat> but it did I'm mean I went sure to was the a Great Wall before Lara and wore a t-shirt with Lara on the front on Great Wall. Nice. Oh, that would be amazing. You have a photo, so, uh, you, you you wanted to do that. No, no, I did it. Yeah, I've got a photo of that. Yeah, oh. you, um... we, we need that picture. We need to publish that. Find, <laughs> find me that, Gavin. I will do. I'm surprised you're allowed to go on holiday, Gav. I don't know how I managed it. I wangled no. it. I mean, <laughs> both games, we were working our balls off. And I, I got a, my honeymoon was the first two and two, right? Made a one, and I went off a couple of weeks then. And two made a two. I went off for three weeks, I think. To wow. Uh, well, you know, you can do anything, right? <laughs> uh, 
there is a um, question about, we're, we're just talking about voice source of Nabla. Would you remember it, like who was Sihokan, Kualapek, anyone in the Formula One, except for Lara, who is still, you know, who did that? Shelly? Uh, no. no. No idea. <laughs> They're not in the, you know, I mean, we weren't particularly extensive in our credits, were we? So. Do we know who voiced Sophia Lee? Because people say it's uh, Judith, but I really don't it think is it Judy. is. Um, Are we I don't think so. I'm pretty no. certain it's her. Did she say uh. <clears throat> And Andy will know. <clears throat> I'm just going to say that for anything now until he turns up. So. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it's Judy. Um, I feel like that's an old wives tale. <laughs> hmm. uh, that was a good bit. Question was uh, question from Corpo Wike. Were there were any places tried for inspiration creating one two three? We, uh, we just spoke about it, but any other any other things to uh no we didn't really get to go to the places i mean it was a it was a it was a uh bone of contention on tomb raider one when towards the end the marketing um in fact susie susie hamilton took a whole bunch of journalists off to egypt for a you know promotional tour and we were still working on the game and uh, people like heather and neil were like well we would like to have gone there but anyway yeah so they, <laughs> a bunch of journalists got to go there but we didn't <clears throat> mm, that was much the same with us as well we're always too busy working on the actual game to be allowed to go anywhere i've sent you an email ash with that uh, picture so oh great thank you <laughs> i'll publish it someone says it's already been on twitter before but i'll publish it anyway once again uh regarding the uh visiting i know that there was a story about um for the egypt uh there was a plans that the team will go to Egypt for research yeah. purposes. And then Jeremy said, piss off, go go to fucking British Museum and take photos. Um, <laughs> yeah, which yeah, that is exactly what happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We were living the life at core, I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, here's a question from Teranate. After seeing now the remasters, what are you most impressed with? I just think uh, I just think it's a great job. I think it's uh, it sort of cap keeps the you know the game still plays the same, so it's not been. Mm. Um, but you know, yeah, it looks great, and I, uh, yeah, it's just everything about it. I think it's just. I, I, in fact, I'll tell you the thing I like the most is the fact that you can press that button and see the old version. Mm. I know they did that in um, the Halo. Remastered, I like that in that, but it's not something. And red alerts. Come on, conquer rather. But that's good. Hmm. It's good. I mean, it's yeah. I mean, the the the, tech, the amount of work that must have gone into to remaking all of the textures and the and uh, the uh, Lara model and stuff is just astounding. I mean, I'm also just interested technically as well how they managed to get how they managed to get the code. I mean, effectively did they reuse the code is there some sort of strange emulator type thing going on no i think they got a copy of the code i don't know where they got it from in the end but um just i did publish tomb raider 3 code uh, at some points i'm pretty sure i yeah. did I, I don't remember where i got it from <laughs> i only I, I definitely got it from somewhere else i i was not given that code i, I found it i think on archives somewhere and i just published it uh i did publish code for five as well, but obviously there's not that. Uh, but uh, I'm sure Troy is here. He will tell us how this was done. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, oh, there you go. Um, th this magician. When you think back of these creating one and three, what was the most prevailing, prevailing feeling? I think I know the answer, but go on. <laughs> uh. I mean, for me, it's pride, to be honest, that we achieve okay. something that still people are still 
I mean, it was hard. I know we often talk about how we were working really hard, but it was it was good hard, if that makes sense, because you were achieving something. It was like climbing Everest or something. That's the way I've described it. You know, that's hard. People, you know, potentially die on the way, but we didn't die on the way, so we got there. But, you know, so you get the sense of achievement of doing it. So it was a hard, hard, hard. But then you made it and you saw it go out and you saw it being successful. And that was it was very satisfying. I didn't think it was going to be, you know, the idea that someone told me, yeah, you're still going to be talking about this 28 years later. <laughs> I would have probably noted down a few things so I could remember it. So if people ask me <laughs> obscure questions, I could actually answer their questions. <clears throat> yeah, I think. Yeah, I think it's right. I mean, well, no, no. I mean, I know I'm kind of, you know, crit critical about some things, and 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 you know, we do complain about some things. But yeah, there is a lot of pride there, and you know, and again, it's it's different to Gav because I mean, Gav was you know the, the uh, originator or one of the originators. But I mean, so I know it's not quite the same as as with Gav, but it still was building a game that was played by millions of people and it was really hard work but it was a, an amazing thing that we did and i mean again when you look at it in, when you compare it to the day, today's games industry trying to put a game like this together in effectively i mean it used to end up being a, about you know nine months effectively for each iteration with a team of maybe a dozen people it's absolutely crazy that you would consider doing that nowadays mm. so absolutely yeah, it needs to come just up with the levels and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just the amount of content that went that, that was in there, really, for a team of that of that size, was extraordinary. What was even more extraordinary is it was our own. You know, we're making rods for our own back. Sure. You know, we we <laughs> yeah. chose how big to make oh, the true. game and how much stuff to put in it. I mean, no one was telling yeah. us what to do, and we just it's true. Um, and, and yeah and i mean also for you for you though i mean you effectively when you consider if you're making a game nowadays you'd be you'd be using unreal or unity you know you wouldn't it's, it's just the idea that you'd effectively be building a game from scratch yes i mean, I mean that's that's absolutely I crazy i know we had months uh, before we even got anything on screen i mean when i joined the project i mean of course it had been going about six months but that six months was enough for paul to have written drawing some triangles on screen you know that was as far as he got essentially which was a big thing back then but it meant yeah. i arrived just when we'd actually got a 3d engine yeah yeah um, it's mad absolutely and then you have to also port them on all the platforms as well in-house which is yeah 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 that's it i mean the 3d effects version was i got a 3d effects card given to me can you see if you can get anything working on that oh yeah that looks nice doesn't it let's do that no, like Crystal D, for example, only does games on Xbox, and then the rest is ported for like, and they, their team is like hundreds of, well, hundred, I think. Mm. Uh, strong. And then oh, no, you have other people yeah. porting, yeah. But here you had all the stuff. Um, here's a question from uh, Teranatia. What do you think is the biggest downside, so downside of studios using pretty much the same engines? Like, but probably talking about modern day, like Unreal. Yeah, um, I don't think there is, actually. You might think there is, but it's less than you think because you can do whatever you like with a modern engine. It's it's more, yeah, stylistic choice, really. Um, so I think it's more... <sighs> the bigger the issue is just the sheer cost of games now means that people are much more risk-averse. Mm -hmm. So you are getting kind of templates for games where you feel like you're... It's like the yellow painted climbing areas. It's like that's standard everywhere. And it's like, it's not even a yeah. great idea. And yet everywhere does it. Every game, I'm playing Final Fantasy Rebirth at the moment. They've mm -hmm. got it, you know, and it's like, why? Why has this become a thing? Um, but once someone's done it, that's it. And, you know, I think, Ash, you were saying about um, Horizon, you know, Forbidden West, I'm a big fan of Horizon. And, um, but they put in a cooking mechanic, which I guess they put in because hey, Zelda's got a cooking mechanics, but it was a complete, it's completely pointless in Forbidden West as far as I can see. It's just yeah. a great faff way of making a potion that you can buy off a vendor for about 50p or something. So it's like... To be honest, I um, cheat in it, so I don't know. <laughs> I have unlimited health. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay, fair enough. But yeah, so there's a lot of, a lot of yeah. cookie cutter stuff going on. I think, that's, mm. I think that's the biggest problem, but that's not really a function of the engine. The engine, you can yeah. do anything. 
I mean, the good thing is, into it, a lot, yeah, it takes a lot of the hard work out of it. I mean, it, it, and that's a good thing because if you're trying to build a game of that size from scratch, it would, I mean, it would take even longer than it does and have a bigger team than it does already. So, I mean, and a lot of the kind of, you know, you avoid a lot of the bugs as well by using that that kind of uh, engine, which has um, had a lot of, you know, a lot of the testing done already. So, in general, mm. it's a good thing. But mm. as Gav, Gav said, I mean, the problem is is that big games companies and publishers are very risk averse which is why i probably spend most of my time playing indie games where some people are actually you know taking risks and doing unusual and different things mm. uh here's one from angel angel me as i call her who came up with the concept of home sweet home uh as the final showdown in tomb raider 2. i think is probably Stu atkinson probably gets the credit for that because he had he obviously joined the team on tomb raider 2 and he'd be very disappointed with the ending of tomb raider 1 and said you know and we'd done the dragon battle and he said it still feels the same it feels like a bit of a damp squib of an ending wouldn't it be cool to do something and then we thought like yeah but we have got time what we're going to do and we thought oh we could reuse our house we've obviously built that mm. um and that's where that kind of idea originated let's just have a full-on battle in the in our own home that would be something a bit different um that's as much as i remember i don't remember who came up with the idea of doing that final scene of the level and all that um but yeah it was and it felt i thought it was good having an epilogue like that and make it, it made made the game feel like it had a proper because you couldn't lose that level you just ran around with ridiculous amounts of ammunition just blew everyone away and um you know it's just meant to be a high act I finished and it was good. So, um, yeah, I was kind of pleased with that. I Ash, I'm going to have to disappear now because, uh, okay, my wife will right. come and get me. Thank you so dinner. much, Garen, for coming over. Uh, we will yeah. just we're, we're through, uh, to make the three now with Tom for a little bit, uh, just so I don't keep him for, for too long of his time. Uh, I know, yeah, so Tom, Tom, to, Tom, Tom's yeah. happy to stay till at least nine. <laughs> <laughs> he loves his three. God damn you, oh, Rummery, I'll get you. <laughs> <laughs> See you, get Tom. Out. Bye. <laughs> See you, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you for coming over. Thank you so much. Right, so That's we're going to play now Tomb level. Raider 3. I think Keen's here because of the uh, monkey sun, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I apologise in advance to my just yeah trying to remember anything i mean i will do my best and also Bye. i'm sending S sandem threatening messages but he's not responding to anything so we'll, we'll see if he turns up or not let's say he, i'm so, just gonna nip out for a bit and then he just never came out <laughs> <laughs> there is a there monkey look at him yeah this one is a friendly one They're all good boys. They're all friendly. <laughs> so this is interesting looking at this in some ways because this in, this was almost like my big my big introduction when um I joined uh when I joined the Tomb Raider team, I'd been working at Core only for a couple of months, and I ended up I think there just wasn't room in the main room in the main office, so I ended up working upstairs in a room, and I shared that room with. With Jamie Morton, who'd also started working on Tomb Raider, yeah, actually yeah. As, as level design for the first time. So there were two of us in there, and that, look, that monkey just picked up a medipack. That's exactly <laughs> what you want out of a monkey. It's, uh, yeah, it's stealing it for you. Yeah, but look, uh, you know, uh, shows uh, you it's it guiding you. Yeah, it's exactly. Guiding you. Yeah. Oh, it is. I didn't know this, you know. So, I mean, you told me about this, but I thought, like, no, she's still stealing stuff from me, so I'm going to kill her. I didn't actually know it's guiding mm. you. No, they just drop you, drop, and in some ways it's almost like guiding you into the entrance to the level. So that was the other thing. I I was working in, I was working on the AI stuff, and I was watching Jamie. Jamie was building this level at the same time. So it was um, it was, I spent a lot of my first few months working on Tomb Raider three, basically working. Well, I mean, maybe not working with Jamie directly. We were working on things like the monkey sort of, and how, and I was kind of helping to show him how how they could be used in the level. But it was like, yeah, he, his work his were the levels that i saw most of early on because we were that we were working in the same office with uh with troy yeah uh, uh oh, is it troy um troy horton 
Trey Horton, yeah, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately passed away as well a couple of years ago. Just, just, just such yeah. a lovely guy. Just such a great guy. Yeah, absolutely lovely. Uh, uh, first quarter zone game I played was age three Thunder Four from Brian Six. I never played that one. <laughs> I, think uh, I, have I played either. Fighting Force. I played Fighting Force. I remember that. Uh, That's yeah. a huge beaten up game. Love it. Um, I remember Fighting Force. Have you? Did you work on it at all? I, I don't think I did. I mean, it was it was in development when when I got there. I did a little bit of of uh, work on a game called Oh God Ninja something. I can't remember Ninja what it was called now, but Yeah. It's really yeah, great to remember. see the original uh, Cordes still in touch with some fans. Uh, Tom, would you say that a valuable, uh, say that a valuable thing a part of Tomb Raider are connecting between the people? Yeah, it's really. I mean, uh, to be honest, I'm kind of quite skeptical about it. I don't because I don't think about Tomb Raider a lot of the time, but. Whenever I go to an event, I'm always really humbled. Like I went to the event in Derby last year and just seeing people's enthusiasm for it and just meeting everyone who, where, where it's made a, you know, a, a big impact on their life in one way or another is, is an incredibly humbling experience. And it's, you know, it's, it's a, it is an amazing thing that people that are still playing the game and are still enjoying it, you know, you know 20, more than 25 years later. Uh, yeah. Ninja Shadow of Darkness, Colonna says. That was the game. That's right. It was not maybe the best game, but I think it was the, probably the first game where I did a little bit of coding. But, I mean, this is another thing I was thinking about this today because I was thinking about I think it's, it's a few years since I talked to Gavin last. and uh, But I was thinking when I, because when I joined Core as, as kind of an AI programmer, it was lo- a bit like, because I'd been, working previously in in academia and i thought i was an okay programmer and it was like someone going from a sunday league football team to to go into the premier league you know i thought i was okay at programming and then suddenly i was with these people who were just so so good at programming so um it was a bit of a a, a strange experience when i first got to core suddenly being with these amazing programmers yeah oh the, the tigers always stress me out so too fast <laughs> <laughs> oh have you, you have not seen the tomato three before have you the way they've done it no i haven't no i haven't but yeah there's a lot of um um what you call it foliage they added they added like puddles and stuff like that yeah yeah very lovely effects I think they added the um, tracks as well, the so when she steps into the mud uh, and crawled, yeah. Yeah. The, the crawl dive they added back in, that was cut. That's right. Yeah. Well, there was a question about this stealth night. I, I forgot who asked this now. Uh, actually, let's see. Uh, Taroshi san, um, what, what time in development was a stealth knife cut? <laughs> uh, mechanic was cut. I am I am really sorry that I I cannot remember. I mean, it may be that I because I joined a few months. Maybe it had been in. Uh, I mean, maybe going for about three months when I joined. So it's possible it was cut before I joined. But also, everyone was kind of you know to some extent doing their own thing. So I wasn't directly involved in the sort of gameplay things. But I mean, another thing as a as a general point, because often people ask why was this cut or why was that cut. I mean, it's quite often it was either time or or memory restrictions was the was the reason you know a lot of the time kind of people think that there's some a deep meaning behind it but a lot of the time it's just because we just ran out of time or because it was um you know i mean because one of the one of the changes of course was uh, we were kind of um just kind of making changes with the uh with the engine and the more moves we added the more uh memory that took up um, so it was just, you know, it was always a fight to just get any new feature in and um, have enough memory to be able to do it. So it's conceivable. That was why. It's also possible, and I mean, again, I'm just kind of just speculating here, but it's also possible that it was thought that in actual fact, it was one thing having Lara shoot people. It was another thing actually getting Lara up to someone and stabbing them repeatedly. <laughs> uh, Censorship, so probably. It, 
it, well it's 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 conceivable because um yeah i mean because also as soon as you start having um melee combat you potentially run into it, it it leads to gameplay problems as well so it's you know you've got two characters potentially running around trying to stab each other it, it's difficult to get it to look good um, so melee combat is what difficult was, I, angel me is asking what was the uh, you most proud of programming in tomato three <laughs> <laughs> the, the trouble is whenever i do these things i have di trouble disentangling what what went in in tomb raider 3 and tomb raider 4 so i know like i said earlier for tomb raider 4 it was getting it was getting things jumping for tomb yeah. raider 3 it was just starting to get rid of some of the issues early on like things like you know laura being able to stand on a box out of sorry stand on a block and just shoot something and it kind of basically just running in circles now although sometimes that had been fixed previously in some situations i tried to make enemies better at hiding and running away and also i think trying to get enemies that weren't just that were like i said earlier on more than just um kind of bullet sponges so you know that they actually did something they actually you know could be used as part of a puzzle um, or you had to actually think about what you were doing rather than just always just shooting everything. Uh, uh, there was, there's this one, which is a lovely one. This magician, how, how was the atmosphere at core when you joined? Hmm, that's interesting because I mean I, I don't know if I was the best judge because obviously I I was new to the company and in fact I was not I wasn't just new to the company I was new to working in video games, so it was very it was a very, very different working environment to what I was used to. Um, the atmosphere was a, a bit strange, I think, just because just because of the Tomb Raider team moving on to working on Eden. And obviously Project then Eden. we had the two yeah. yeah, Project Eden. And then we had the Tomb Raider, the kind of the team that took over Tomb Raider. Now occasionally it would feel slightly like, you know, there was Occasionally, it would feel slightly like there was friction, but in actual fact, looking back on it, I don't think there was nearly as much as you might have expected, really, between the team that kind of took over and the team that were, you know, the original team. Um, you know, there was a lot of uh, people were very helpful, helped each other out. I mean, people had their own, but on the other hand, people also had their own projects. So, you know, we um we couldn't sort of like expect that the Project Eden team to help out that much because they had their own game that they were working on, and also because you know because at, in the same way that we found ourselves a few games later just actually just wanting to get off of tomb raider after kind of you know feeling <laughs> that you've done your time i mean we had a great time doing it but by the time you've done two tomb raider games you kind of feel like it's maybe mo time to move on to something else so i could understand that they didn't want to get involved that you know that's that why they wanted to kill her <laughs> off in tomb raider 4 didn't they <laughs> that's why we wanted to kill her off in tomb raider 4 so there was a, a question that flashed up on screen and i didn't I didn't have time uh, to no, it. it wasn't a question. It was just a question, okay. uh, like a, um, just like a statement, really. Um, okay, no problem. Uh, right, let's see. Um, but yeah, that, this one, you mean, that we can thank them for the okay. hardest to get in this year. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. I wanted to get an enemy that, you know, because you, you, you know, I think an animal would run away and hide if you shot it, probably, uh, if it couldn't get you. So that was the other thing was, again, just working with um, with uh, Phil Chapman on the uh, kind of animation, trying to get enemies, trying to, you know, as a mixture of trying to get the animations in, both having them made by Phil, but also actually having, again, the room on the PlayStation memory to get them into the game so that enemies could actually climb up after Lara. So that was the thing was for most of most enemies in the game, apart from human enemies, they didn't have the animations that they would allow them to go after Lara and climb up things. So again, I can't remember when those went in, but a lot of that we got those climbing animations in a lot of enemies in, in either three or four. <laughs> You can see Lara's look, problems with Lara's braid there clipping. I mean, it wasn't too bad, but when when we were talking early on today yeah. about the braid, that was one of the problem potential problems was it clipping through Lara's body or through the backpack. Uh, Chris Nephilim, 
I always thought that the enemies in Splinter 3 were more challenging, not because of unfair fight distance and being bullet sponges, but the fact they challenged the player with their approach at times. Um, I hope so. Yeah, I mean that was that was the thing is just trying to you know just again. I mean things like oh god the snake. This is this is one of the first new enemies to put in, and I apologise. It's the bitch. <laughs> but <laughs> but again, it was it was trying to get an enemy that wasn't just you know if if it that was just doing something a bit different than just running around and you shot it. I mean I know essentially the essentially the snakes are a trap rather than an enemy i mean that's you know that's all that they're there for but just yeah. trying to give you something to think about so that it is something slightly more different uh, slightly different to just an enemy that runs after you and you shoot it so that was always no, what i was snack. thinking about yeah. yeah uh that is a good one for you uh did you do the um parting shots when the guards die and they do that final yeah and I'd, I'd love to claim i don't think it was me you thought of the idea and i can't remember whether it was rich um rich morton or or phil who thought of it and i think if we might have even seen it in the film you know it's uh, so many of i know we've talked about this before i think previously ash but i mean so many of our references came from films you know we'd see a film yeah. and then you know we would be instantly right let's get that in let's get that in and i can't remember if there was a particular film that had the dying enemy but it was like, oh, actually, that would be a cool thing to get in the game. So, yes, that was definitely something where I think someone else mentioned. I'd love to claim credit for thinking of it, but I think someone else mentioned it. And it was like, oh, yeah, I think I can I can get that in. Yeah, that would be a cool thing to get in. And I really, yeah, I really liked the parting shot uh, thing in Enemies. I, I was so pissed off when it happened. And I was like, oh, yeah, cause, oh, for fuck's <laughs> sake, I just healed. You know, there's just a little bit of health now is missing. It yeah. stressed me out on OCD. Okay, yeah, I mean, again, and that was another thing, you know, we were we were very conscious of the fact that, you know, p people who had already played, were like, probably had played the first two Tomb Raiders, and we were just trying to just basically subvert their expectations and do something that would, you know, surprise them, really. Um, a more technical question from this magician. What is the biggest difference between programming work on a game back then as compared to today? Uh, I mean, it's it is so it's so different i mean it's just so uh where do i begin i mean it's it, it's i mean just so so obviously tomb raider games were, were written in c not not c plus plus or c sharp just c there was so little in the way of built-in uh um you know tools to help with kind of debugging or anything like that i mean just you you would make errors all the time and uh it would be could be incredibly difficult to track them down um so you know that's one thing there were kind of none of the tools that you get in programming today but also i mean just just generally the whole of development was different then i mean if you know we had we had no i mean to to tell people nowadays who are involved in the games industry you'd be working on a game where you didn't really have a schedule i mean you knew an end date that was all you know that you did there wasn't really any there was very little in the way of planning of when particular things would be done by when particular levels would be done by who will do what there was almost no scheduling uh so you know all, the whole of development was just so so different to today um but yeah being able to do things like you can do if you've ever you know people have used unity or unreal where you've kind of got that whole integrated editing system it makes things so much easier um yeah I, I just love the foliage on the, the like the amount of foliage they added in the remaster just making it more it's lovely it's lovely and i mean yeah. you know I, I feel so i kind of always felt in some ways i felt sorry for jamie because it was his first level and mm. trying to do trying to use the tomb raider engine that was obviously quite blocky to build a jungle an outdoors jungle <laughs> kind of naturalistic level I kind of feel like in some ways he drew the the short straw with this first level because it was it was really difficult trying to build that kind of natural foliage kind of yeah undulating environment in the tomb raider level it's easier to do yes. indoor structures yeah they, they kind of make more sense and they don't feel less um out of place so they're not blocky uh if, they're, if, they're, if, they're, if, if you're using grid system like indoors mm -hmm. because you we would tend to build square buildings anyway, people, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, that's uh, your work, isn't it, the, the Shivas? I loved, I did enjoy the Shivas. And this is this is an example. I really loved working with Phil. Phil is is just 
just amazing. I've never, in all my years in the industry, he is the fastest animator. <laughs> I mean, it's extraordinary. He would, you would say to him, "Oh, can it? Can can you get it to do this?" And he'd just go, "Yep." And and literally, you know, a, a day later, you'd have the animations you need. They, he was so so fast. So yeah, this is one I of the first this. kind of. I I really enjoyed these characters. Yeah. <laughs> And I think because the Shivas, they can cross the swords and you can't shoot. They protect themselves with shield, don't they, for a little while. And again, yeah. that was something which, I mean, I'm trying to think of enemies previously. They may have done that in previous Tomb Raiders. But I mean, again, it was trying to, you know, trying to always get away from the idea that a player can just hold down the fire button, bounce around. And, they, you know, that's all they need to, to think about. So again, just getting that shield thing in there made the player actually stop firing for a little while. Um, and think about what you know what they were doing when they were when they were fighting the enemies. Uh, yeah, the recent question of going back to the film references, prison can seem uh, inspired by aliens that we see in the beginning of the movie. <laughs> it's new, right? it's cool. And I've tried to remember that. It's quite possible. There's fantastic levels. The thing. I I think in. there was. I think it is very likely. I mean, again, you'd have, you'd have to ask Pete, but I think I think yeah. definitely, yeah, I think that was definitely an inspiration for Antarctica. Yeah. There's a comment on the jungle as well. It did, yeah, it did. Oh, I, I, with she was when I remember playing this level, uh, discovering that there are enemies like that. What I would do is I would hide from them. And stuff. I had to see what happens, and I would do that for like to an hour or so. I was such a weird child. <laughs> it's like it's like hiding on them, trying to make them like go here, go here, and like play hide and seek and run away from them. That kind of stuff, pushing the limits of the AI, but they never could catch me because you obviously they don't, they can't crawl and whatever they're giants. Hmm. Right. Uh... It's interesting uh, seeing that interact. Sorry, I was just, I was, I was just watch, sorry, just watching play. No, no, no. It's just I was just I was just trying to decide whether I like the interact icon. I can I can totally understand why it's there, and you know, because for modern games, you have to make it clear when the player can interact with something. But I'm trying to work out whether it's whether I like it or not. <laughs> the the grabby folded thing. Hmm. To make the three on PS One is stuff of nightmares. The most horror game ever. <laughs> but the horror, the most horror game that ever horror. That I admit. I don't know how people play it on PS One because it's so dark. It just, I, I would be shitting myself. Uh, to be honest, I already shit myself on two or three period, like the, the Antarctic levels. But without controls of the brightness, it's just ridiculous. Mm. Oh, apparently you can turn off the um, the. Um, Interact. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. did wonder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, I'm not, I'm not criticizing it. It's kind of one of those things where I can see, again, people. It's, I, and again, I, I can go on about this for hours. But it's, it's really interesting how, how, the nature of game design has changed in 25 years. Just, it's just like kind of the early days of cinema. People get used to things working in a certain way, and and things that you could do you know or people you know people things that people would accept in early films people don't accept now and it's like the idea now of not seeing whether you can interact with something it would be a strange thing um so i can understand why it was why it was put in uh but i think it's kind of going back to what me and Ash, uh, me and gav were talking about earlier on when yeah. we were saying about kind of not having the uh the yellow yellow paint on interactable edges yeah um it kind of feels like piece of guidance that feels a bit at odds with with the tomb raider spirit somehow yeah the, but again the i understand why it's get lost <laughs> yeah. get lost some things uh right we i'm pushing like two and a half hours now with you tom i don't want to like you know take take away your saturday so is there any particular yes, levels you want us to show for tomb raider 3 uh where you think you we can talk about your work more uh with enemies and stuff like that Oh God, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember now again. What is there is Tomb compound with the prisoners, um, where they help you. Uh, there is a uh, 
also in London, what? there is like the Dan Gotham Fall. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, is there is there the famous uh, me and Andy Sand and Boss level in there by any chance? Uh, in t- in the Lon- uh, the Willard, is that his? Meteorite Kevin. Okay. Oh God, Meteorite Kevin. Oh jeez, go it's on, awful. Then. Go on, go on. Let's do that. Oh, so, oh, actually, well, yeah, either that, either that, or the Nevada, Nevada Desert was like um, me trying to put in some stealth because obviously we were playing a lot of stealth games. There were a lot of stealth games around yeah. at the time, and it was interesting in that trying to put in some stealth type activities um, and give. But I mean, again, it was very light touch. Um, it was the best we could do in the short time available. This one, I don't think. I think I've talked about it before on the Ashes. Like, I'm just not sure I've ever, ever forgiven. I think it was Rich Morton, basically having a boss level where you've kind of got this track that is the size of the AI doesn't work well in con- constrained spaces and having a boss where the track it was running around on is the size <laughs> of the boss itself. So basically we had loads of early attempts where the boss would eff- effectively fall off the fall off the track into the lava. Oh, um, I'm trying to get the volume taker. They actually added the music back in uh, that Peter could not put in at the end of the game um, in the original Tomb okay. 3. So for remastered, they actually put it back in, as you can hear. Uh, I also know that it's, it's an interesting one as well, watching because uh, I've watched video of, of people playing this, and it is the kind of number of exploits that are in there, the, how easy it is for <laughs> someone to basically do this level when they are used to it. But again, it's one of those one, one things that when we put it in, it seemed too hard, if anything. So I remember trying to get that balance right or the, of the difficulty right for an average player rather than for someone who is an expert at the game. Um, mm-hmm. they, they do like the speed running um, thing with Tomb Raider is quite large, actually. There are quite a few people in the chat that you could play, you could just run uh, or like walk through some of Tomb Raider games with no loads or no meds used, which is yeah. absolutely. Uh, self-sadistic thing to do i don't know how these guys do that <laughs> well this is this is the other thing i mean when when i kind of talk about tomb raider you know again and this is talking about the difference in game design now 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 and then and this is again no criticism of tomb raider because it was a you know for its time it was amazing yeah but having having a game with the kind of inventory system the tomb raider inventory system where you had no idea whether when the player got to this stage they might have all of the weapons you know every, every single weapon and loads of ammo or they might still have somehow screwed things up and still effectively only have the pistol or at least only have ammo for the pistol you know it's like so it's trying to trying to judge what now na- nowadays you would never do that in the game you would kind of you know you'd have um used various design like you'd use um health regen or something like that rather than health packs because that's the other thing is that a player may have hundreds of health packs when they're doing this boss or they might have none and it's trying to judge you know how difficult to make the level when you don't really know that how how much how many how many weapons the player's got or how much health they've got because um, mm. obviously if you've got a rocket launcher rocket launcher and loads of ammo yeah. this level becomes pretty trivial uh, right. I, I i got killed by this guy so many times i hated him so much when playing it for the first time Oh, there you go. Done. Yeah. Let's see the ending, and then we'll go to, back to Nevada to look at this stealth. I think it's compound, the one you mean, or is that the one with UFO you mean, uh, with the stealth? Um, I can't remember now whether it's a, area. Was it Area 51 or was it compound? Was it a prison? There is Area 51 as well, yeah. I, remember, but, I can't remember. But but how I, the trouble is, I can't remember. It's so long now since we did it. But I, I just remember, you know, trying to put things in there with the guards to to give you some some sense of stealth um but it was again you know we kind of did what we did could do in the time available and i think that was another thing that i added was that wasn't in there originally was basically putting um instructions down so in the level editor you put a baddie you put an enemy down and you put an instruction down effectively for what what it would do in the editor uh, we will. Uh, we will. If we have time, we'll also show the Sapphire fight as well, since I'm sure you're oh really involved in that. <laughs> Actually, let's I go to Sapphire believe. first. Let's go to Sapphire first. 
I th then we'll go to Nevada instead of Area 51 because of the uh, there's much more AI work I think in the, in the Nevada, yeah I probably uh, the for you to show. Okay, but uh, yeah, I might I do apologize. I might need to go in about ten minutes time. Ash, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Well, well uh, uh, Seth, okay. come on, uh, show us the uh, Sapphire fight because Tom is embarrassed by it for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> well again it's yeah so uh, yeah. um miss croft yep there she goes i'm pretty sure it was so, Judy who voiced her isn't it uh the sapphire i'm not sure anyway, go on tom S so look, I mean, this is one of these things that it. I think the best way to summarize the Sapphire fight was it seemed like a good idea at the time, uh, <laughs> and uh, so we wanted to do a boss battle that again, you know, was trying to get away from just having a boss battle where you just leaned on the fire button and jumped backwards and forwards and and did it a thousand hit points damage. So it was like, ah, oh, wouldn't it be cool if we did a, a boss battle where you were, you know, on two different skyscrapers and. Uh, and it was like a really cool idea, but just in some ways, again, the, the Tomb Raider engine wasn't particularly built to do that. So trying to do a boss battle where you're not, because obviously your camera is facing where you're running, but you're not actually facing the enemy is um, doesn't necessarily make for the boss best boss fight. And then the yeah. other thing was trying to do sorts of things like trying to keep Sophia and you at a similar level on the on the building so that you you know could always fight against her. So there was just constant triggers in there to make sure that she didn't get too far ahead of you. You, you didn't leave her too far behind. Um, and it was actually you know possible to survive the fight, but it wasn't too you know trivially easy. When again you know when you see speedrunners do it, I mean there are so many exploits and ways of cheating your way <laughs> through it basically. Um, but this is one of those ones where basically me, it was me and Andy in my office for days and days. And then just, you know, till two, two or three in the morning, night after night on this one boss battle. Cause every time we, it would screw up in one way or another and just trying to get it where it was actually, you know, worked perfectly every time. And we would both be hysterical. We'd be so tired and, when it screwed up in another spectacular fashion in, you know, it, that we would just be, we would just be crying with laughter when, when we, when we'd fuck it up yet again in a, in a, a new way. So it was just constantly, basically Andy changing the level, me changing the AI, trying to find, you know, between the two, the two things, trying to find a way that made it all work properly. Um, so but yeah it's like one of those things where it seems kind of trivial and it's not i know it's not the greatest boss battle ever or by any means i mean it's like pretty shit but it was probably the single thing that i i have the fondest memories of is just being in that room and it just there you go oh, someone that God. someone likes it well thank so, you, you know. thank you akari <laughs> metal slugger for <laughs> Uh, actually, there is a good one. Um, is there a boss fight you wish you could have created but didn't? Or maybe something for Safari uh, to add, maybe? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, it's just like I think I kind of aspired to do good boss fights like were that like they were in kind of Zelda, and I don't think we ever kind of got to quite that level. But mm. kind of having that kind of you know sort of different stages that you went through. Um, and I think we did, you know, we did kind of hints of that. We did things that kind of felt a little bit like that. But I mean, we just didn't have the kind of resources all the time, I think, to spend huge amounts of time on on our on our boss battles. So, yeah. There you go. Another one from Chris Nephilim. I love to fly yeah. in the concept of a boss oh. fight by working environment. It was so fresh. Oh. Loved it. And <laughs> frankly, they uh, recreated similar thing with the... Uh, golden pack lost artifact where you, there is sapphire in there uh, and it's kind of similar you have to keep the distance from her and she's crawling and all that stuff so they kind of yeah, yeah. made it in a similar fashion so it's there interesting what's she playing <laughs> <laughs> what's she playing area 50 so in, in, in here it's like this is interesting in that it was and again it, something i've talked about when i've talked about the ai over the years it's kind of trying to make the enemies that were 
stupid in the right way because so you didn't want enemies that were stupid like running into walls and things like that you know because that just felt like a bug but enemies that were you know guards that were a bit stupid and didn't have a great sense of hearing and you could kind of crawl behind you wanted them to look like they would you know you wanted you wanted there to be some sense that you would alert them but the and you know the the level had to be playable which meant that they had to be pretty short-sighted in their vision and you could do something like crawl underneath that i think there was one particular bit where there's a guard on the walkway and i spent ages trying to work out exactly the distance of his perception so that you could crawl underneath him if you crawled underneath him you wouldn't trigger him if you walked underneath him you would trigger him i may have made that up but i think there is that exists somewhere on this level um uh, did you include the sentry guns in Nevada levels, Angela? She's asking. Yeah, I did. I mean, they, yeah, so they were enemies, so I think. So they were mine. But I mean, they were, again, kind of trash enemy, Trash enemies, probably the wrong way of putting it. But it was like, a, <laughs> it was just an enemy that, you know, did a, did something different to a normal enemy. So, yeah, I think that the, the turrets were, were mine. But, yeah, they were just sort of simple, a simple AI controlled enemy, I think. Okay, I'll give you the one final question. I know you need to go. So there's one. Uh, did you program from Dr. John Alcorn? Did you program the dinosaurs to become the ballistic in Terrain 3? If you leave them too uh, long enough, eventually the raptors will attack each other. Yeah, I think I think I did. I mean, it's like I can't remember now. Was it the two? Are the little tiny enemies? Are they in Tomb Raider three or four? Or four the little tiny three, dinosaurs. Three. They three. agree. So yeah, yeah, I think they were would be attacked by the raptors. So again, I think they were we were trying to lean into and I mean again, give credit to Gav. I mean Gav obviously in Tomb Raider 2, there were enemies could fight each other. And if you and if you that's it, compies, yeah, thank you. And if you, you know, if you use them wisely in Tomb Raider 2, you could get the enemies to fight each other and you only had to take out the survivors. And it was a similar sort of thing in here that we wanted it to be, you know, players who actually thought about it could use the dinosaurs to take each other out so that you had less of them to fight yourself. And, and But again, it was probably, we were probably just watching Jurassic Park, to be honest, and just trying to find any scenarios from there that we could rip off. Um, but again, good. that was, uh, yeah, but, but yeah, the compies actually, I tried to get some swarming. That was another thing that I tried to do that was new in Tomb Raider 3 was get some little uh, swarming enemies. So, you know, again, when I, when I used to do some stuff looking at AI, there was lots of research looking, trying to get, enemy, uh, trying to get, model animals and do swarms this is before i went into the games industry so i tried to bring some of that stuff into tomb raider where you had like swarms of animals behaving in a in a kind of naturalistic way that, that would actually be very cool to see the like hundreds of companies trying to murder her <laughs> yeah 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 it's good fun it's good fun and again, uh, more crazy uh, Phil Chapman stuff, building something which looked like a really cute dinosaur. I mean, the number of poly polys in those compies were, were so small and considering, you know, how how simple the models were and the animations, they looked pretty, they looked pretty good. Because obviously we couldn't afford to have lots of enemies on screen if they were, if they were high poly. Yeah, the memory limits. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, just one more thing. Uh... cool uh, mm. right okay uh well tom thank you so much for staying for so long to answer all the questions right. for us uh and cool. yeah there you go i agree with this uh schmattens uh thank you for giving us extra time uh really enjoyed it thank you so it's... much for coming over as well and i do apologize for no. cancelling and not telling you that i did because oh, no, no, no. So that's cool. Sick. No, 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 that's cool, Ash. No, no, no worries at all. And I apologize for not playing playing the remaster. I will get a copy of the remaster. I mean, it looks fantastic. <laughs> really, uh, to everyone who's been involved in doing the remasters, it does genuinely look fantastic. And you and you've done a great, you've done a really great job. It looks really, really yeah. good. Do and not buy the remasters. I'll get you the copy. Is this PlayStation <laughs> Five? You said. Don't, don't worry, Ash. Don't, it's it's fine. It's fine. Anyway, I'll talk to you. Okay. I'll talk to you offline sometime. All right. Thanks. Oh, okay. Anyway. Okay. Cheers, everyone. Uh, Thanks, everyone. See you later, Tom. Bye. All right, Seth, cheers. Take care. You want to unmute bye. yourself? Bye. <laughs> yeah. Bye. bye. Uh, okay. Well, we are done for today.
uh, Seth, thank you so much for playing this. Even though no we worries. have love-hate relationship with each other, you know, and all that stuff. But, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of sexual tension between us, but it's fine. It's all bad. Uh, it's all bounce, yeah, exactly. Even though you sound like Elon Musk. Um, if that is the phrase. That is the phrase. He does sound like Elon Musk. Come on, chat. Do Seriously, I? he does. So, Do I really? Yeah. Say, say, say some words. Come on. This is Big Brother. All housemates to the sofas now. There you go. He he owns X. He and I'll have to life. listen to him. I haven't paid attention to the guy. You sound like him. <laughs> he really oh. does. Uh, well, thank you everyone who uh, followed me. <laughs> followed me as well i seen the lights were flickering in the background which means someone either cheered subscribed or followed because i, I because i'm using Streamyard for group calls i don't get to see notifications but my room gets them so thank you for that um and we will play tomb raider 3 go uh, why that's our tomb raider 3 we'll play tomb raider 1 and finish business tomb raider 2 golden mask and tomb raider 3 the Lost Artifact yes. next Saturday, probably at 7 p.m. UK time. I will confirm the time and we'll announce it on Twitter or Instagram or YouTube or on all, actually on all three. Um, but not to miss it, make sure you, you know, click that bell button on Twitter and Twitch as well. So you don't miss that. We'll, we'll actually have an entire team of IDAS USA who actually worked on those levels separately from core design if you didn't know this trivia um yeah and if you want to watch previous developer streams we've done of the games without the remaster on it i have done those as well starting from tomb raider one ending with the angel of darkness it's all on my youtube channel just search for timber flash it's there um and we're pretty much done and i will be streaming i'll, I'll come back to streaming soon as well so guys thank you for for you know for tuning in because i did not expect so many of you to be here tonight to be fair i thought everyone forgot about me um yeah well and set will play gold packs with us yes. next saturday as well so Badly. yeah it's all it's <laughs> that uh, no you got some compliments you know i actually uh, uh -huh. highlighted them as the comments on like on, on live so when you watch, watch the watch you can see that cool thanks okay yeah, I'll see you guys later. Later, Gators. Right. Bye. See you all. Bye. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, end stream now. <laughs>